What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to Voice of the Era podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and hit that notification button for more content on the platform. And make sure to also follow us on rumble.com at Voice of the Era for more exclusive content and full episodes of unreleased scenes and unreleased episodes that we'll be having there that will be uncensored. Feel me? So thank you very much for tuning in and continue to watch the new episodes. Peace. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Voice of the Arab Podcast. It's your boy Day, Portland Live, and we have our new guest out here. Introduce yourself, my brother. How's it going? Musa Kone, professional basketball player. Yes, sir. You know the vibes, man. So we got the big cousin out here. You know I mean, we go way back to childhood days. You know I mean, niggas ain't like me at that time. You know, I used to bother people a whole lot at, at that time. Man, it was different. It's crazy that he's saying this right now, but <laughs> nah, it's just so funny, bro. Not for real, because niggas to go at it every day, man. Yo, so, yeah. but give that like spicy a... start though. But hold on, we can mm-hmm. touch on that for a second, because bro, we used to. Like, I think it's the game like physical the- type shit. Like exactly. for real, for real. Like moving furniture. Back, <laughs> then, was like, back then it was different. Though. It was mad. Well, you know, we used to go real, out. Yeah. We, we used to go to Coney Island. Yeah. Right. Uh, we used to all hang out. School days, girls, weekends days, together. All that. Yo, go to the auto shop all the time, and even the Bronx Zoo. Arabic school. I remember that one. All of that. But yeah, man. So like, give like a um a brief a brief introduction about yourself. Like, where you come from, and like um like what do you do, and stuff like that. Like, how did you get into basketball? Like, how do you first like, grew, like how did you first like find your love for basketball and stuff like that? So you can start off with like where you come from first. Um, I'm from the Bronx, bro. <laughs> I'm from the Rider Wave, like you, bro. But my family, we come from Ivory Coast, West Africa, Cote d'Ivoire. To be exact, um, I'm uh, my mom's third child, born in 93, 30 years old right now. Uh, I grew up on Sheridan. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Shiesty for real. Sure. Moved around a little bit in the Bronx. And now, for the most part, I've been st- um, all the way out in um, pretty much uptown in the Throg's Neck area. So just in and out for real. But... Started playing basketball seriously at the age of 13, 14, when I realized that, like, I was told, like, I mean, when me and my best friend, we were told, like, yo, like, you guys got some talent. You guys can potentially go to school for free. Like, once we heard that, we was just like, for real? And that was for real. That was just the mission the whole four years, bro, after that, from freshman year to senior year, secure scholarship. Make sure my mommy had to pay a dollar. That was the only thing that I was worried about, bro. As long as she had to pay a dollar for my college opportunities, tuition, whatever, bro, I was happy. So that was really what got me really hooping for real. Like, yeah. And then as I keep hooping, I fell in love with the, with the game, stuff like that. But I was fortunate, bro, because I started hooping at 13. I'm playing on the elite root, grassroots basketball team at 14, AAU. I used to travel every week and I'm traveling from 14 to the age of 17, mostly in the summertime when it's AAU season, yeah. I'm traveling. We had a Nike grassroots team called by the Metro Hawks. I don't know. I don't even know if that team is around anymore. That's how long ago that was. But they probably might still be, bro. You know, they bro. might be though, but this team at that time, super elite. Everything was the way it's packaged now with like how the high school kids got the EYPL and the AAU scene on, on tilt right now. Mm-hmm. Like it's a movie. Yeah. Like, Shit, mom. I was the first. I played in the first year of it. The EYBL, the the elite youth basketball league. So that was just like a, a, a outside league that they like had in the community for everybody to be in, or like no. I mean, EYBL is basically like a. It's like the NCAA tournament for AAU, oh. in a sense. So like the top like AAU teams, the top players and the top one hundred players and the whoever playing whatever AAU team playing against. So. At the time, I mean, I'm a class of 2011, bro. I graduated two years ago. So when we played EYBL, I think that was the first. The first year was 2010 uh, EYBL when we did it. So we played the hell, hell of a schedule, bro. And this time I'm playing against uh, players like a Bradley Beal, players like uh, 
you know, a player like, uh, you know, Austin Rivers, because they all come from the same class as me. So yeah. that was when it was like, at this time, I mean, this also, no cameras. Oh, so all used to play at AAU together then? Together, no, against each other, yes. Yeah. So, like, if I'm going, if it's a Nike tournament in Houston, we playing each other, yeah. potentially, if we're in the same group. Or by the time we're in the playoffs, whatever the case may be, to move up in the tournament. There's tournaments in Virginia, Boo Williams we'll go to. There's Nationals in Florida, we'll probably see them. There's the LAX in LA that we will go to. All these places I'm traveling to from 14 to 17, almost every year, though, for my AU. So you get exposure. So I'm, I was just pretty much trying to just take care of business for real yeah, and just hoop right. and hoop and hoop. Like, I didn't have no... I had coaches that would train me, but I didn't have, like, a trainer trainer. So how about like in um in high school? Matter of fact, what high school you went to? I went to Frederick Douglass Academy three. I see um on third Ave, one six nine, right on the nine. I used to live also on one six nine in Sheridan too. So I used to just walk down the strip and that was in my school. I went there for middle school and yeah. high school. So I I was in that school for seven years. So, so like for example, so like as far as in like getting into the like the team and stuff like that, like was it even hard like getting on, on the team? On the basketball team? Yeah. And I, being that I was in the school from middle school and high school, I was able to see what it took for it to to be on the high school team. Yeah. So I'm watching the games in seventh, eighth grade. Like, all right, cool. This is what the big dude do. This is what the little guy do. All right, this is what they be doing. All right. But mm -hmm. the fortunate thing about me is I had a group of friends, and it was five of us, and we was five of us together all the time. We yeah. just played at the basketball court all the time. All the time, I had a, a point guard, a shooting guard, a forward, another, fo and then me, and then another big, whatever. So that was just us, our five. We had shooters, we had everything. So, so we would go to other parks, bro, in the Bronx to play against other fives, and we just got better at it and better. So for the school better. team, y'all was like going outside and still like we weren't even on the school team. This is middle school days. So when we sure. got to, we just was like, all right, let's just stay in this school. And yeah. when we got to high school together, us five was like, all right, let's see, we make the team, like. And we got the team. So everybody made it? We all made the team, for real. I'm not saying everybody played, though. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was one of them sitting on the floor. Like, I wasn't even sitting on the bench, bro. Like, it was too many people on the, on the team at the time. So I didn't really Damn. play that much. But I was getting experience, though. I was seeing what it took to hoop, though. So I was trying to get better. Like I said, I was on a mission, bro. Once I was told my mom ain't had to pay a dime, bro. You know, coming from where we come from. Hell yeah. It's, it's, a, it's tough. You know what I'm saying so, sending a, 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 a African American child off to a four year college institution, bro, is it's That's gonna tough. cost you. You feel me? Like a four year school, bro. So it was. It was just a blessing in the skies for real for me. I was just grateful to that. So that's what I just took that on and just kept it pushing for real. Went to college, played all four years, and then played professionally out in Europe, mainly Europe for real. I just played in. Uh, but in high school though, like so as far as in like um in high school, how many points per game were you like averaging and stuff? Oof. You might have to go year by year for real. Um but for the, I can tell you just my the best year I had there was my senior year. Yeah. Average probably around like fifteen, twelve rebounds. It's kinda of getting I ain't gonna lie, I was getting like triple doubles in blocks i used to really like blocking Shit. shots like how that's how i learned the game though i learned the game from defending more mm -hmm. and then i was like yo you still got the skills to at least score a basket yeah because if you don't do both college not gonna look at you for real Facts. i mean they want like a complete athlete to give that d1 scholarship to that's a lot of money they invested in so yeah. they want to make sure you know what you're doing both sides so i learned defense first and i i'm so happy about that because i learned how to Defending basketball. Then when I learned that I can use certain aspects of my game to score, I'm just dunking and blocking shots now. So I'm going to game like, all right, I'm trying to get 10 dunks today. Shit. If I'm getting eight, I'm happy. 16 Shit. points for real. Yeah. <laughs> wow. There you go. So, I mean, I'll block a couple shots. And that's how that was just my game, running, jumping, defending, just running, running fast-paced game. And fortunate for me, like, I grew up in an area where it was, like, two bigs in the, in the post. Like the big man was four, yeah. like the four man and the five man was both bigs in a sense. They were big bodies. They had to play in the post. Where now, like it's way more fast paced. The, the game is faster. Everybody shoots. It's yeah, everybody got to be a shooter. And unfortunately, now, I, was, I love fast paced that the game continued that route. So I've been able to keep it going for real. So I, I mean, I just took that professionally and just kept that one going. So like how many colleges like came at you when you was like in high school? Like, because I'm pretty sure like because you say your senior year was like your best year. 
Yeah. So I'm pretty sure in that year was when now every other college is like started reaching out now. Like it was like, yo, they want to get you for sure. Yeah. So like how many colleges, like all big known colleges or division one colleges came out to you and told you that like, yo, they wanted to sign you to their team and stuff like that. Right. So, I mean, like I said before, bringing back to the AAU situation, when you in that circuit, that's when the colleges get to see you more. Like I went yeah. to... My high school, like in New York City, PSAL, there's double A division, there's A division, yeah. there's B division. Facts. I used to be, I, yeah. we used to be in the A, I think we used to be in the A division too, also. Right. Yeah. I played in the B division, bro. Yeah. Damn. Feel me? So I had to compete with all those other players that's getting crazy scholarships because college is gonna look first at the double A. Facts. They they gonna look at the at the A, or might might not look at the A. Mm -hmm. They might, they definitely not gonna really push them. I mean, a D, like a D one school for real, for real. They really might not push them. So like, playing in that AAU circuit kind of like gave me a little buzz. Mm. Where it's like, all right, I'm getting the experience in this, these competitions, and I'm taking it to the B division. Yeah. With my best friend at the time, who also played AAU with me, and got a scholarship just the same as I did, and from the same institution playing B division. So we was just like, all right, let's. We just fueled all of that and put it in together and just stuck together and stayed in the beam. It was just like, all right, we gained a little bit of notoriety here. Let's stay. Granted, those a lot of double A schools wanted us to transfer to those schools where we could have went to yeah. and we could have was like, F these guys, let's go over there and let's just try to get a chip with these double A schools. We could have did that. But why do that? Let's stick to our roots. Let's stay where yeah, we was loyal to. Stay, we was really loyal. That was what it was, bro. We were loyal to each other. So from playing five on five in middle school to sticking to each other in high school and playing to it and playing together. So that was just what it was. So we were just loyal. So we was just like, why leave a loyal program? They did everything that they could for us to be in this situation right now. So let's sure. let's put our names on there. Let me let's put let me let's just represent them. Yeah. And it was our neighborhood too. We all lived both of us lived on six nine. So it was like regular for us, and we we love the love over there. So why let me why leave something that charity and love like me? You getting all the love, why not? Yeah. So what that. was like um out of like the like all the school like all the schools that had gave you the offer, which one were you like contemplating with the most? Like between like out of oh, the yeah, top let me, two? my phone. I didn't even get back to that question, but yeah, the schools that I was like looking to was like a few schools. Okay, so I had uh. Manhattan University, Hofstra University, St. Bonaventure's University, Iowa University. There were two big East schools at the time that wanted mm -hmm. me to play prep school, but at the time I didn't feel like I was, I wanted to do school again because I was yeah. pretty much done with it. I wanted to move on. And now those schools are we UConn in West Virginia. They wanted me to go and work on my skills and play a different position. So I was just like, ah, I'm done with high school. I kind of want to. Move on to the next, like you feel me? I didn't, it was sad, but look at it and looking back at it, maybe I should have made it. It is what it is. I'm happy mm -hmm. where I am now, but I'm just saying, like, those opportunities were given. But I was like, all right, let me just I go. To, I went to Hofstra because I, I was like, all right, let me stay close. I want to stay close, but at the same time, far because Long Island is a different yeah, New yeah, York, dude. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's not New York City, yeah. it's a Difference. It's a, just everything about it is different. You get on campus, you don't even feel like you're in New York. So I felt like I was somewhere else, but That's I was right. super close to home where my family could come whenever they needed to. Like I could get home cooked meals from my mom if I asked, and just make a, a phone call back home when I was college. So I was. It was convenient for me to be back close, and I want. I just wanted to be close. Uh, other schools as well. Um, outside of Manhattan, just yeah, that was pretty much it for real. Like there was other schools like UMBC. Oh, let's see all the way up in uh so how's like your first like year like like your first year of like the high school experience like high school well, like no no i said what, of like college right yeah how was it like what did you expect and then what did you get like once you first started college college is different bro because i'm coming from the bronx yeah i graduated class of bro like barely 50 well, kids i think we might have to shut that ac off yeah, it's hot right now. Turn it off. Sorry, people, but it's bacon. <laughs> Sorry, we gotta turn that AC off. That shit fucking with the sound. But yeah, my fault. So um, yeah, I was saying like, Not yo, yet. so like, walk me through like, I right, what you expected, right, of college, and what actually like, what it was that you actually experienced in college. Like walking. <laughs> My first year, bro, I ain't gonna lie, still to this day, college, those four years of college was those best four years of my life still. Yeah. And I think a lot of 
not just athletes, but a lot of people that go to a four year institute can attest to like yeah. that. Those are just years that just it just it just can't you can unmatched pretty much. You can't get that back, bro. So my first year, I expected I expected to be work like to work my ass off for real. I expected to push myself. I expected to be in the hall. I expected everything to be different. That's one thing I was happy that I did. I expected to to change my I just changed my whole tune up, like from the Bronx to something else. Like try to, I tried my, I tried my hardest, just try to like become a better person yeah. and develop into a better young man when I was in college. So I tried to soak in all of the stuff from coaches. Mm -hmm. I was, I mean, I was going out my way to meet because when you're at college and you're a D1 athlete, you just only around athletes. So I tried my best to, to, to go over and beyond and be outside of the athletes and I try to like make friends with regular people just mm -hmm. to just just to and just to be around other things and cultures and different kinds of studies and people just and I I'm grateful that I was able to see a lot of new things in college my first year especially like, like the basket the welcoming was great because I mean when you go when I went to college I had to go there early so I went like literally the doc, the day before no the day after July 4th I had to report oh, to the officer, sure. like, that was it. I might have been there the July 4th, and we had a barbecue, I believe, too. Oh, wow. Like that day, just like a welcoming thing at the coach's house. The welcoming was great, bro. Like, I had a great coach's like time. celebration where, like, it was I like, mean, nah, I mean, really? that's like a pep rally situation that they all yeah. do, like, when they about to kick off the season and stuff like that. But as far as, like, a big celebration, nah, the big celebration is just you... Got to take your stuff upstairs to the dorm for real. <laughs> and I mean, but it's just pretty much like it's at that time, like it, it's a switch. You get to work. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of work to do, like as soon as you get there, because you signed for Facts. big money, bro. His scholarship is worth a lot of money. Wait, so how much, like how many, how many times a day would, would it like make y'all work out? Like twice a day? Once so when I, when I first got to school, they be having usually like the preseason like eight weeks. So you have class in the morning. Or we might have class in the afternoon, but mostly yeah. class in the morning. But before that, even that class in the morning, you got lift in the morning. Early bird. Not early, early bird. My college was pretty like decent with as far as being lean with that. Yeah. So like seven was decent, like seven fifteen, yeah. like a six forty five even. Something like that. A good hour work of what your strength and conditioning coach has got in store for y'all it could be a conditioning day depending on the day it was like a basically like it was like a a good schedule like monday we did something else tuesday all the way up until friday we did something else. weekends we were off weekends we might just do pickups or other practices with the coaches because there's also ncaa rules that they got to oblige by like yeah. there's certain things that they can do with us athletes at the time because i'm sure it's probably different now but there's certain things a certain amount of time they can spend with us during that summertime when we've got to prepare for the season yeah. that's coming so we they have practice like, in them they never used to like pull you out of class like whenever like oh no 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 they was adamant about because one thing about being a d1 athlete that they were adamant about student first yeah and that student athlete so they would make sure we had study hall make sure we had tutors it's pretty much up to us if we do the work and get the necessary grade was also, bro. You need to have a specific address, average to play per semester. So it was like, like the average, like 2.0. Two, nah, I believe it was like a 2.5. I want to say 2.5. I want to say like 2.5. Yeah, I think a 2.5. I want to say, bro, I'm not gonna lie to you, like a 2.2, 2.3, maybe the least, but like I want to say a 2.5. Like I'm confident a 2.8. Yeah, but you're still an athlete, though. I think every school is school one point eight, bro. That's tough. Yeah, because you was a student athlete too, so you know. And some of them too, bro. Like, bro, I had. I'm not even gonna say the college name, but when I was running track and field and shit, I had got an offer from some college, like in like Illinois. And it was off. It was like a, it, it was a D three college. It was offering me a full ride. Mm. They was gonna give me everything. I, I was like, yo, listen, like I ain't gonna hold y'all, like. I'm not feeling Illinois. <laughs> I'm not trying to go there. Yes. But then I told my coach, my coach is like, nah, he know about the college. He's like, yo, you're going to be a, a, a vegetable to them. Like, mm. they're going to like, you're going to be a puppet. Whatever they want you to do, you got to do. And if you get injured, they could just easily throw you away. Right. And I'm like, damn. And then he was like, yo, if you go there, they're not going to let you race the race if you want to race. 
they're not gonna let you race what you specialize in. They're gonna put you in a, another position that they want you to do, and you don't mm. want that. Right. I mean, cause some I colleges mean, do that. Some colleges may, bro, but like I said, it means so it's hundreds of colleges out there, bro. So yeah. they're like. They can follow a specific curriculum, but obviously everyone has their own way of doing things. Mm -hmm. So, like, someone's D1 experience might not be mine because it's still different colleges, like I said. So, it's high majors, low, mid, mid majors, low majors. It's like it's D1, D2, D3, NAIA, all that, junior college. There's so many levels that is out there just for some us to, to crash, Juco. bro. Some people go to JUCO. And yeah, that's a whole league. Exactly, bro. That's what I'm trying to Cam say, Newton, too. Cam Newton's perfect example. Perfect. He went to JUCO, came back, won a national championship to the league right there. I went to Hofstra University. It was a... Before I went to Hofstra University, there was a player that got drafted. Yeah. From, he got drafted 44th pick the year before I got... I went to Hofstra. So I would say, like, 2010, he got drafted. Damn. Like, 2011. He got drafted to the Warriors, 44th pick, Charles Jenkins. He still play there? When I, no, no, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. Shit. He's, he's, won, he's won several chips overseas, bro. In Serbia, he played all over. Yeah, overseas? Bro. Overseas. He's won several, several, several chips in Serbia. He speaks the language to the T now, bro. It's amazing, bro. Okay. Like, But going back, but when I used to go and visit Hofstra, before deciding that I wanted to go there, he was one of the dudes that would take me around and would mm -hmm. tell me stuff and stuff like that. He's like, yo, bro, if you're a good basketball player, they're going to find you. That's one thing that he told me. He said, if your game is going to do the talking, don't worry about nothing else. It don't matter where you go. He's a prime example, bro. Yeah. He's from Queens. He stood there. He went to Hofstra, local kid. You know what I'm saying? Stood there all That's four good. years. Drafted to the NBA. Got a chance to live a dream, bro. He still is too, bro. He's still hooping now, bro. He older than me. He a legend for real. His jersey's retired at that school, everything. Broken records, stuff like that. So how's like the college experience, bro? For me, this is this like yo, like this is where we're gonna get to the tea. This is tea right here. This, this is spice. Feel me, party and American pie kind of vibes. Feel me? The spice. The beer can, everything, feel me? Everybody, yo, that's where we don't see no racism, people. And we got the white Chinese. Everything. Arabic, everybody Everything. is there drinking, getting lit. You got your future lawyers, judges, politicians getting crazy and shit. Like, Doctors, how is that publicists, journalists, everything, bro. You, everything is everything is out there because, bro, it's different, bro. Like, what I can say is if you want to go to college, go to like a campus kind of situation. Yeah. Where you can stay on campus and you can experience growing up and being on your own because that's a lot of people's a lot of kids chances 17 18 19 year old people kids chances to they're that's they're on their own for the first time like that's the first time they don't got to worry about calling their mom that night yeah. to, to, to to you know to check in because they just i mean they, they off to college you know what i'm saying maybe yeah. maybe not but the scene is insane it's just everything i'm talking about house parties club parties block block parties how your head up I'm probably giving out mad tea right now, bro. Hofstra had a club inside the, on campus, bro. Oh, nah. That's different. <laughs> Crazy, bro. So the frats. So we had all of that frats, sororities, all kinds of frats. You they know ain't that. trying to convince you to join a fraternity? Yeah, bro. Um, I know they definitely did, bro. It had to been a few. It's funny because you know one of our families in this frat, too. Uh, Alphas. Alphas is big. Uh, Alpha. Nah, wait. We don't got no Alphas. Alphas? Nah, I, no. I don't, I don't think we don't got any Alphas in the family, though. BG not alpha. BG alpha. Ah, hell no. <laughs> BG alpha. Let's not even talk about that shit. You know we're not gonna talk about that oh. story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're a big editor, bro. Yeah. Let's take that off. But nah. Now we can go back right. to um. Uh, feel me. I'm gonna you could go ask that. Like the. Nah, but yeah, alphas. Which wasn't like, oh, wait, so the alphas wanted you to be a part of it, then. Yeah, so, I mean, there were a lot of alphas on my campus at the time, so yeah. a lot of them would try to, like, approach me and ask about me wanting to be a part of their fry and join them and stuff like yeah. that. But, I mean, I considered it a lot. I mean, bro, it was, it's a different kind of brotherhood. And then Facts. it's a something that you'll benefit for the rest of your life on. Mm -hmm. um, but I had my... I had my own reasons why I have I didn't I wasn't a part of them. I didn't want to be a part of them. But I mean I've always thought about it though. I always thought about it though. So 
So like, but I always went. I went to college and I wanted to be a Q, bro. So oh no, nah. feel me. So I don't know if that determines lie, if man. I'm that kind of person type shit. Yeah, but. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. I'm yo, look, man. <laughs> Bro, bad motherfuckers. I heard, bro. Bro, them niggas doing some wild shit. I bro. heard about that. I ain't gonna but the thing is, I had went. To, I went to a program at high, at high school, so like I had a big bro, and he was a Q, so like he would tell me about mad stories about. But he went to school down south too, so like he told me about the stories. Exactly. Nigga, the south HBCU is for more. real. So he was telling me about stories, Q life, and they would. And he would have his some of his bros come out, his frat bros come out, and then they would do step and shit stuff like that in the auditorium. And I was just be wow, like, yo, that's fine. Bro, like, and I'm I'm saying at the time dancing was crazy. At the time, him doing that, we were toe whopping and shit. Facts, and he was getting light. <laughs> he was getting light. You feel me? So if I'm seeing them getting light in the mood, I mean, in the in the little stepping situation, and they over there busting a new move. I'm like, oh, that's, oh, that's fly. But I wanted to be a cute. There was no cues where I was at. Damn. They had suspended them from campus. Wait, so aside from Alphas, what other one did they have? Did they have like Sigmas and stuff? Um, damn, did they have so they had sigmas, but it was real small chapter because being from Hofstra, it wasn't they were like all like they were black frats and sororities, mm -hmm. white frats and sororities. So it was like a whole crazy Greek life out there, bro. Yeah. It was insane. So a lot of the frats and sororities, like the black major black ones, were like they would be at Hofstra, but some of them, some of them would be based around Hofstra. There was a lot of other universities, so like Nassau. St. John's, Old Westbury, all of those schools. So it was like a huge Long Island situation. So it'll be, they'll have like punch outs mm -hmm. at like Eisenhower Park, if you guys are familiar with that. Movie. Movie, bro. I can't even put words in the first how party. crazy that, like, oh, my first Hofstra party or you yeah. like my first college party? Mm -hmm. It's two different things. You know what I'm trying to say? How was the first party, though? Oh, okay. Damn, my first party was insane because one is something I never seen before. So I'm already <laughs> walking to the walking to the shit like yo, whatever. I'm coming to the party. I'm about to hang out with my people. We about to enjoy ourselves and go yeah. back. But then when you go and you see like people jumping off the roof, people doing keg stands, bro. Ice sculptures in, in the backyard, bro. Like speakers all over the place, bro. Lights oh, all over the oh, place. Oh. Everywhere, bro. It had to be doing phone parties, like yeah. everything smoke just in the house party. Why wow, you got smoke in your house party, bro? Which means smoke, like just the smoke, like the you know the party smoke shit. Oh, like oh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. for what though? Yeah, yeah. For no reason, bro. The fuck? I'd have been to like, bro. Same, bro. We would have like that's just that, like, like an my... American pop movie then. <laughs> what's the wildest on, on, on tilt, yo, bro? What's the wildest shit you see that one in the parties, bro? Like the wildest shit that was like, yo, what the fuck is going on? Type shit, bro. I mean, shit. You know, college kids, what they be on? They dabble in the mad shit. I've seen a lot of people dabble in shit. The way I was like, whoa, it's kind of too much. I can't even do that. I'm good where I'm at, but I can't really speak on what I've seen. That'll be too crazy. But. Yeah. I can speak on how crazy these parties was, bro. Like, I'm talking about an acre of just bouncy houses. Acres of just uh, ice sculpture, big ice sculpture joints that people just taking shots off of. Like, damn. Big ass slipping slides, bro. I forgot what we used to do. We used to do like this international war stuff. I forgot what it's called, bro. We would, whatever, but, but. The parties was insane, bro. House parties where you go to a backyard of one house. You know when you go, when you like, you go down the street and there's like houses, right? Mm -hmm. So when you go down, to, when you go out to one of these houses and you in the backyard, like they got the fences that way you can't see around the other houses. Facts. I'm talking about, I go to one of these house parties, bro, and they knock down the fences out. Fences, bro. Oh, and join the whole shit together. Block party style. Damn. That's on some St. Patty's Day shit over there, bro. And that was, bro, it was... College life is different, bro, because they... That's just license to act a fool, bro. For real. <laughs> and then the shit. university is just out there just embedding it, bro. They just out there just... 
Do provide, they know about Providing though? shuttle buses. The university's doing it. Come on, think about it, bro. The university is just providing shuttle buses for yeah, clubs right, to fact, back to dorms. Allegedly. We're never going to allegedly. that. Allegedly. 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 You know what I'm saying? University. Yeah. I told you universities are having clubs in there. Yeah. Allegedly. I went to... Um, you could be cool with some security at the university and throw some house parties. Yeah, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, that goes. If but, they find... You know what I mean? If they find whatever like, they find, they can keep it. Man, that's mostly like when you're like off campus, it's more easier to do that though. Yeah, of course. Than to do it on campus. Because yeah, on campus, they got surveillance cameras and everything and then they got like always staff way, people that bro, be there was always, patrolling and shit. There's always a way to finesse, bro. It's always a way to get through. Shit. Nah, I went to... I went to... Uh, UA... Yo, that shit was lit over there, bro. This is like homecoming week of UA, University of Albany. Bro, I get on a highway because I had to go to Manhattan and go pick up my boy Booba. He's the one that be hosting too with me. He, right. he was, he's not here today, but we usually, uh, we was going there for the first time. I had to pick him up from a freaking um, Penn Station because he had just came from his, his college. Yeah. So I had to pick him up from there and then we had to drive straight to Albany now. So now are we driving, bro? Bro, I'm tired as fuck. Niggas getting sleepy. This nigga sleeping. I'm driving. Man, I can't even keep awake. I start blasting the music and all of that shit. Just I'm going crazy up. just to stay up, bro. Yeah, I was probably like hitting like punching like 140, bro, on a dash. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> going crazy. Music blasted, right? Niggas get to the campus. We get the state quad. This like stay quiet of the uh, uh, a specific spot on, on that area. Now my car, the back has a camera in it. Right. So when we get there, I'm reversing the park on stay quiet. I'm seeing like the TV noise is like showing on the camera screen, bro. I'm like, wait, what the fuck going on with my camera? But I'm like, you know what? Fuck that shit. We in UA. We give them buzzy tonight. Niggas <laughs> here, <laughs> like, yo. Or some American pie shit. Like, I'm like, listen, bro. We in UA, we give them pussy That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, so just, just off the, just you just leaving your spot and going to another school like that. Just imagine what other schools could do with other schools being there too. Mm -hmm. So I'm seeing schools from the city come out to Long Island to party. Cause maybe, yeah. for example, like if we're on Christmas break or some shit, I'm staying on campus. I'm an athlete. I'm not going nowhere. Yeah. I gotta stay. You know what I'm saying? So there's other people coming from, they live in Long Island. They just don't go to school there. They go into the same clubs that's right that I go to on a regular. So that's just, but that's I mean just because that, I'm just saying that people just love to go interact with other college situations. So just you're yeah. a college kid, bro, but you're really a part of a huge base of mad kids too. Like it's just Shit. mad people from 18 to 21, 22, whatever, 23. Man, my situation that day. Time. I want to ask you that, bro. How was your my first college? That day. My party, bro. Like, yeah, how was my that first experience? college party was. What would I say, bro? Because remember, yo, I've been partying since I was fourteen, bro. Right. Even in the Ivory Coast, I was going to the clubs over there, and then coming sure. back here, nigga, I had a whole freaking ID. Allegedly, had an ID that can get me into places, bro. Mm. Feel me? So, <laughs> my first experience, honestly, that I'll say with the party life was when I went to a club, mm. and I'm like sixteen, seventeen type shit. You know what I mean? Allegedly. And I'm just getting some good dances with some, you know what I mean? Some yeah, shorties, yeah. you know what I mean? Okay. okay. And then, you feel me? Then we had, we had to go to the bathroom, go have an adult conversation and shit like that. You feel me? How'd that shit go? Like that. I came back and that was my first experience of that. I'm like, yo, this shit is lit. I started partying more and then I started throwing the parties and shit. But for the college ones, I'll tell you about the Moore's real story, but that one is yeah, wild. Yeah. I don't want to get in there because even some, okay. some people, some people yeah. might know who it is. There we go. That's but, what I'm saying. We know too many people yo, that, that can tune in that we can. My really first wild this. college experience was like, yo, just me going to Syrian. Um, I, I say the litters. I went to an event. It's a shorty I used to talk to. Mm. For me, she did at the event. I see her. I'm like, damn, she looking good. Right? What you do? I ain't do nothing. I kept it cordial because we wasn't talking with each other. You feel know I me? Mean? Yo, I kept it cordial. Yo, when I kept it cordial, now my boy DJ, feel me? And then some other nigga that's dead. I'm nigga that I don't, I'm not cool with no more at that time. We wasn't even cool no more. So niggas did some funny shit, bro. I'm just there chilling. I ain't trying to dance with no shorty because I don't want to get a reaction out okay. of the shorty. You feel okay. me? I'm not trying to do that. I ain't an asshole at the time. Oh. So, Chilling and the nigga that I don't, I'm not cool with, 
decides to dance with the shorty. Ooh. And you know, at that time, niggas used to get lit when they came to dancing, bro. Yeah, Yo, lie. my son bent shorty time, over. Bro. My son bent shorty over, daggery shorty shit, and I'm just there. Like, I didn't even see it first. One of my man's like, yo, hey. I'm like, yo, what's up, bro? He's like, yo, ain't that the shorty I used to talk to? Mm. I'm like, what shorty? He's like, nah, he said, yo, look, she dancing with this nigga. Right? And yeah, I turned around. I seen that shit. I'm like, damn, man. And here I go trying to be the good guy. I was like, damn. Should have reacted that. But it's time. the funny shit that happened. That nigga has a sister. Oh, you talking crazy, dude. Feel me? Oh, <laughs> hey, what are you gonna say no more, bro? <laughs> nigga, sister came in the party, nigga. <laughs> nigga, the way how I greeted her was, oh, hug, mm. on the block, bent over, daggering the shit, man. I'm like, listen, man, two of us can play at that game. Now I'm free to have fun. So. And then it was like the cappers over there, you know, doing their own shit. Some yeah. of the alphas came, they throwing their shit out. They want to do the stepping. And then the deltas came. Yeah, like they started that. doing their stepping. I'm like, damn, this shit lit. Yeah, yeah, so that bro. Greek life, I ain't going to hold you. They be they be having fun, man. I had my experience with like with that whole shit. But the one in UA shit, though, was the worst. Bro, when that car screen went blank, yeah. we get out the car. I'm like, fuck it, man. We're going to go fuck some bitches, man. We're going to be lit. Yo. While I'm walking towards the trunk, my left hand just starts shaking, bro, for no reason. Cool. I'm like, wait, what the fuck going on? And then my boy Booba, he's in the car. So now I'm walking towards the trunk. It's shaking. And then my head, I just turned quick and I looked. Bro, tell me how my whole back bumper was gone, nigga. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> I got the video too. That shit crazy. Nah, you can show me that the, later, bro. We gonna put the video down. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yo, when that shit happened, I was like, yo, nigga, boo was like, what happened? I'm like, yo, you ain't see that bumper my no bumper more, gone, bro. bro. Nigga, so like, what happened? see that shit no more. I'm like, yo, my bumper gone, bro. He's like, what you mean your bumper gone? He, he came out, he started laughing. And I was, I was pissed off, bro. I was like, yo, my nigga, if this nigga keep laughing, bro, me ain't gonna have to fight today, bro. <laughs> nigga laughing like a motherfucker. When he seen I'm mad serious now, he's like, oh, he's like, damn, that's crazy, bro. And I know you want to laugh. <laughs> Yo, that shit <laughs> fucked up my whole stay in UA, bro. We had everything lined up. We was going to talk to what shorty, go to what event, everything. We went to mad different parties, and I wasn't even happy, bro. Nigga, I was like, I didn't want pussy no more. I'm like, I'm good, bro. I don't want pussy. Damn. But what really got me pissed off was that I had a dealer's plate, and a dealer's plate cost like around 1500 and up type shit. Yeah. And I lost that with the bumper. With the bumper. But you had the joint in the front and the back? Too, nah, you know? dealer's plate, the they only give you one. Back. Hey, remember that a dealer's plate is 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 is, is within a company and shit. Yeah, so you, you know, have to you, you could put it in any car. It's insured and everything is all covered. But you have to own a, a an establishment or a dealership to get that. And I lost that. I was pissed, bro. Hold up, shit. Yeah, I had to come back to New York two days later. I came back, then drove had got got a rental. Drove all the way there with the rental to get the tow truck to show the tow truck how to get to um. My pop shop. Yeah, that's doing crazy shit. Road trip shit. <laughs> Road trip shit. You had a blast at UA though. It was lit, but the parties got shut down. Mm. Yo, they had some shit at, um thing at the car parking lot. Everybody was there just getting stupid lit, bro. I ain't gonna lie, those really be some of those stupid like, lit, bro. Those times really be some of the memorable stupid. times because like the after party situations, the let outs. The oh, I just ran into us. Oh, those was really, Yo, really. Every memorable. party got shut down. Every party that we went to, the ones on the campus got shut down, and it was doing grimy shit, bro. It was, it was like they didn't organize it right enough. So every single time, like people be out the door, they make it too hot. It's too many people. And remember, UA was known for throwing a great, great ass party. homecoming. Yeah. So every college would be coming there, bro. It's from freaking no, I, um, I got Brook. a few times. It's from U B. Buff State, everybody right. comes straight to UA for the freaking homecoming because that shit was stupid lit. So it was too crowded. Anytime was a party going on, bro, like two blocks would be packed out in a whole line, bro. Mm. Shit crazy. We used to have, we want to have homecomings. We would have like 
That's what we used to call them joints, bro. But it was just be like, it was homecoming, I guess. Yeah, Cap we, rallies and stuff? Nah, we had our homecoming joints where we had like the concerts, like every other school and stuff like that. But my, peep this though, like my freshman year, Meek Mill just came out with I'm a Boss. Oh, shit. So he's there. Rick Ross out there. DJ Khaled out there. And they just turned it up. So that's my first year in college. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was I'm going there for free, though. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn, this is a movie. Nah, oh, that following summer, we have a Spring Fest. Now, guess who had the, I guess who had the concert now? ASAP. Me and my winning me. Wait, what year was this? This was 20, 20, like 2011, 2012. Yeah, that's when he started like popping. This when Goldie was out. Yeah. Damn. A lot of people wasn't up on him, but you know, ASAP from Harlem. Mm-hmm. It's around the way, bro. We listened to ASAP. At that time, I was listening to ASAP. Joey Badass. Facts. Oof. You know what I'm saying? I was listening to them boys for real. Nah, that's lit though. I so, they was able to go to the Exactly. College. So the next following year, who we get? We get, I think we had Big Sean. Like, so pretty much my whole, but that was my freshman year. That was just crazy to me, period. That's a lit ass freshman year though. At the time, Meek Mill was one of them. My, when I just came out of high school knowing him, I started mm-hmm. listening to him at the time. So him being at my college and I get to rap, I'm a boss, it's crazy, Rick Ross, all that. And I got then, to meet them and stuff like that too? No, nah, we never got to meet them. Damn. I don't think we even got to meet him, bro. At my school, also at the time when I was at Hofstra, they was they would throw presidential debates at Hofstra. So like, Obama would like shut down the shit for real, like shut down the school. I'm talking about snipers, yes. snipers on top of the towers. Oh, so he used to go to the school too. Nah, like, he, he just they, just they would use our arena as mm-hmm. the debate area. So That's that, what I'm saying. So they all be they out there come, politicians they, they would use like our locker room Damn. and all that like the office. So but then they gotta have a secret service and everything out there. Everybody gotta oversee everything. So shit. Everything is on lockdown. So CNN, NBC, ABC, CBS, all of them is yeah, at my school wild. 24 hours, 24 seven for real. And I got to experience that twice because they did two debates. My first year and my last year. Which shit. is dope. That's a wild shit. We tried to invite Obama, but he, I guess he wasn't fucking with us. Damn. He's like, yo, pull up to the practice arena, bro. Nah, he ain't gonna do that. So I guess but how was like, so how was like the relationship lifestyle over there, like in college though? Like, were you in a relationship your first year, two years, or, or not? Okay, so I went to college, when I entered college, I was in a relationship. Yeah. By the time my freshman year, like a little bit before my freshman year was a bit over, I was out of that relationship. But wait, before the freshman year ended? Before it ended, I was out of that relationship. Yeah, that's usually it how really it goes. It couldn't really work. It was a little, let me long distance. Yeah, that's usually crazy. how it goes, though. Whatever, but that was done. And then so after that, I didn't really have no really relationship. I had females that I was, you know, acquainted with on a normal around basis. Around the way. Around the way. You know, I had like a, I mean, I would talk to some females, but not that many. I mean, shit, I mean, it's college, bro. I wasn't really trying that to that college lifestyle. On somebody, on that one. college but, I mean, lifestyle. I, I mean, I mean, I've had females that I was with for a couple of while, for a while, and then it was like, all right, cool, let me. It's in different, that, bro. I can't even college talk lifestyle. Oh, like Cause that, me, bro. bro, for me, I don't think I was popular. I was always low key. I wasn't popular though. No, no. Bro, nigga, you playing a fucking V1 school and you're on a basketball team and you're a starter. You're popular, bro, whether you like it or not. I don't me? think I was popular, though, bro. Bro, like for me, I, I, wasn't, was good I wasn't popular, good bro. I don't think I was popular, bro. I just knew people and I always like, whenever somebody needed something, yeah. they knew that I was the nigga to probably go to who could get certain shit done. Okay. So I was just so, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't popular, but I, I was just there. Right, right, right. So everybody knew me and it was like that. But I was getting access to mad shit, bro. Feel me? And I'm not even trying to brag about it, like shorties, parties, yeah. venues. What's the craziest when shit they... you seen at a party, bro? Let's go there. Oh, I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> the shit, shit, bro, yeah, we throw parties all the time and yacht parties and all that. Shave the new yacht party. Shit, nigga. I ain't um, never been on a yacht party. I did one, the yacht party in 2018, but that shit was wild. I had a shorty that tried to get me, yo. Shorty tried to get me to sneak into like one of the private rooms because we had, I got like the whole yacht. So I had a private room upstairs. So we was going to go there. And I'm like, I ain't going to lie. I got to finish running the boat first, yo. I'm not, I can't leave everybody like 
without the shit they need to get first before I go up there. It's like, nah. We go up there, somebody's up there. So I had to kick everybody out of there. I'm like, everybody, I get the fuck down, yo. Nobody, nobody should be coming up here. And I thought the doors could lock, but the doors couldn't. So I said, she's like, yo, we out to the bathroom downstairs. I'm like, yo, listen, this shit's a headache, man. I'm good. Don't worry. After the after the out party, probably could link up and do whatever. But a wild shit I seen at a party was, and it happened twice. I did a party here in the Bronx. I rented a venue out. And while I'm organizing the party and doing the event and everything, Somebody is in the back getting her cheeks clapped. A lot of cheeks clapped. Clapped. Like that. At first, I thought I was bugging because I had walked towards the bathroom and I turned around and I seen it look like somebody was getting, like, giving head. Some shorty was giving head. So in my head, I'm like, nah, I'm bugging. My eyes are tricking with me, bro, because I probably had one shot of Henny. Mm. So continue. I walk to the back. Get a drink, come back out. I'm going. Then one of my boys come, my boy Kenny. He's like, "Yo, hey, some shorty in the back in her cheeks clap." <laughs> I'm like, "Wait, what?" You have to go see, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they go, what? "I'm not gonna go see, nigga. Shit, it's my party, nigga." I feel Yo, that. I walked in. I walked towards the back area, nigga. I was acting no clues. Had my phone in my ear like this and shit. Oh. Uh. Hey. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Made my son hot. And I went back. I reversed. I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm gonna just let them continue. They are having fun, really. <laughs> but people, most people saw it, and I didn't know. So later on, like the next day, everybody was hitting me up like, "Yo, day, some girl was getting her cheeks clapped at the party." <laughs> And I'm yeah. just like, damn, and I knew yeah. the girl too. I'm say, I'm about to ask you I knew her, I knew her ass, man. Doing I'm doing never gonna I'm never gonna listen, I'm never gonna tell anybody it was you. But yo, you wild. You wild. Listen, I, I respect it. But you bold. So now you you talking to the girl though. I yeah, guess. she bold. Oh the nigga, I didn't know who the fuck the nigga was. Oh, the nigga, was, the nigga was somebody that just came to the party, he was some, like, he, I think it's like some Jamaican nigga or something, or Haitian or something. Just got I don't know, right he was shit, different. Right. Yeah, he just came randomly. <laughs> just got right yeah, bro, some regular hood nigga, bro. You feel me? Nigga came on some New York shit, man. Yeah, how we doing? You feel me? And he, he, he bagged me, you feel me? And she nice, bro. She look good. She was... But damn, at the party's wild. I fuck with you still, though. But college, bro. But thinking about college was fun, bro. Because, bro, you was a student athlete. I was a student athlete, bro. So I know you got... Is it different? I mean, both of us do different type of schools. I was in the community, bro. I mean, that's what I'm saying. It's you in the D1, it's yeah, different. Yeah, it's different. But you still yeah. had your time, though. And you know what I mean by that. No, nah, but I had my time after I got out of college. Okay. Because now we, like, time. we were touring state to state. Oh, okay. Meeting new people, new connections. Like I, like, I have friends who are lawyers now, people who are trying to, like, become like the next dis- like district of attorney and shit yeah, now yeah. so that shit is amazing to me bro me a person who's not even a college graduate mm. i was having conversations with these people and they all saw me as like the equal that's one you thing that i really that's why i really say like even though there's so much fun to be had mad partying yes yes all of that is there at those four-year institutions bro but the the beauty of the networking that you don't realize that mm-hmm. you can be a part of is amazing. Yeah. Because you don't know that you're gonna see someone that probably might be a politician, might be a doctor, might you be might have a run in with the person in a different sector in the business world or whatever. But for sure you will. Cause it's always by granted I still see like I run into college friends right now, like people mm-hmm. I really used to go party with that are doing situations that I could probably connect with them and do collaborations yeah. or do something with. Or just, you know, just still keep talking to and just keep good friends with. I mean, just those conversations alone, bro, it takes you a long way. That's why I say that about those four institutions. But, but the other schools is great, too. I'm not saying don't go to those, but I'm saying you, in my opinion, you'll benefit more from branching yeah. out and going to that school and actually adapting to different cultures, different kind of majors. But that's, if, that. but that's if that's if you're going for the right reasons, because I know a lot that's of people... That's true, bro. That's true. I know a lot of people that they try to get away from their family so much that's true. that the moment the opportunity presents itself for them to go to a college... It's crazy that you They got that. no scholarship, no grants, no nothing, and they want to go to, like, a U, UB, UA, where you're going to be paying, like, at least 20, like, around 25 to... 
forty thousand per each semester and shit like that. So it's like you can't even afford it, but you're gonna pull out more loans just because you want to be away from your parents and have a wild life. Right. Now, if you're gonna do that, you're actually gonna like put in the right work, get the right grades, and graduate. Right. You're good. You're fine. Yeah. You might get a good career job for you to pay everything back off. Right. But if you go into college on that, just to go party and do dumb shit and do not work as efficient as how you're partying, you're screwing yourself. I know mad people who, like, they're in debt right now because of that. They had to drop out of college because of that. Right. Never graduated. Never did nothing with nothing. None so of let that me shit. ask you this. So, the ones, some of the ones that you know of that 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 left the city, whatever, to go to school somewhere deep just to get away from their parents, as you yeah. said. Where they come from? What's their background? Oh, they're not African. Like, where they from? They're from here. Exactly. But you do, do you know any Africans that are like that? Some, you might know. Now, there's some Africans, though. There's some for sure. But, but like, the why? majority of Africans is now on that type of time. Yeah, but then, yeah. now that begs to ask, you got to ask the question, like, bro, like, why is it the parenting situation that has the kids wanting to leave so hard, go so long? Because I could have did that. Mm -hmm. I could have been like, yo, I'm out of here. Fuck y'all. I'm, 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 I want to be. I kind of was on my own, yeah. but I wasn't too far. Like, yeah, if was there was an emergency, rest. I can pull up in less than an hour. You know what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say? Or they can pull up on me in less than an hour. I yeah. mean, but, you know, but I'm saying like those situations, those, it kind of sucks because it's like, damn, like you want to move. You want to run away from your family. But Facts. then again, and like you, sometimes some of us need that though. You need that discipline. You need that because you're not going to become who you are to benefit your family in the long run. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's, I mean, in a sense, you can save every meeting. You can do what you got to do though, in a sense, but. Sure, no, nah, me, bro. Like I said, like I've, I've, I've really enjoyed that like college experience when I wasn't in college no more. Okay. I had nothing but free time. Yeah. Um, you feel me? I was like, for me, having fun, hustling, for me, doing my shit, whatever, get my bread. Yeah. And at the same time, that's when I like started like directing and shit like that. I started shooting videos and stuff like that more. Right. So I was like touring with my boy Mocha. So we used to go to like different colleges. Mind you, at the time, like we all were like in college at that time too. So. It's like towards like the end when I was like done with college. So we was just touring at like different states, go DJ at different colleges, different campuses, when uh, uh, DC, PA, Jersey. We just used to move around all the time. And then in the clubs over here too, we had Buka and um, my boy DJ Buka and then my boy DJ Don. We're like, yo, they like the, I'm gonna say it. Nigga. Anybody who got a problem with it, that's when y'all don't give a fuck. But DJ Buka and DJ Don are one of the greats of Afrobeat DJs in New York. Put them period. On, bro. Feel me? They are one of the best DJs. Feel me? Don, Don doing his thing right now, but Don gonna come back. Put them on. Feel me? Where at the Don? Gotta let him know. Don is a goat. Don is a goat. And Buka, Buka is a fucking superstar. Feel me? So we used to like yo tour around different clubs and everything, and then um just have fun, bro. And that's all it was about. Right. We'd be going to places, having fun, enjoying shit, meeting new people, right. creating new like new connections, building more bridges, not breaking any of them. Right. That shit was just lit, and it was pure, job bridges, great uh, energy, bro. That yo, it was like for like two, either, either two and a half or three years, we was touring around, touring around, having fun, enjoying, enjoying shit, yourself. never right. no problems, no fights, no arguments, really. Feel me, and you know. Everybody got older. Everybody went their separate ways. Everybody doing their own bro, thing. Bro, yeah. shit, it happens, bro. Me, but like, we still, like, all of us are still cool. Like, when we all in the same venue, bro, it's nothing but pure love, bro. Pure that's love. Up, bro. That's what's up. You know what I, mean? I could call Don today. I could call Buka today. We have a conversation. You start catching up with shit. Having math. It's a great connection to have, bro. Yeah. It's a great connection to have. Um, I mean, I'm sure most of us have friends like that. I mean, people just grow apart sometimes, bro. Mm -hmm. It just happens. It's not even no... No negative situation. I mean, it's nobody trying to be negative. Nobody trying to be foul. None of that. People just yeah. have to just because people grow, bro. Ain't nothing wrong with change. Mm -hmm. And just because they grew, don't mean they grew and moved away from you. Don't mean Facts. they grew away from you. Yeah, it just grew. And honestly, I how I look at it for everybody is like this, man. Like everybody perfected their craft. So I mean, at that time, we was, we we were all figuring things out. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah, bro. everybody just perfected it crap at that I time. I didn't have a bro. podcast going. I mean, in the beginning, I did have a podcast going, but I stopped it and I committed to Man. the team with them with Mocha, yeah. Buka, and Don. So I stopped the podcast shit. 
This is like 2017. I'm like, I bet. That's when Mocha invited me to a 4th of July party. It was like a concert or a festival. At first, I wasn't going to go. Mm. I was like, man, I'm not going. It's like, because I never really knew Mocha at that time. I had booked him um, to get Don to DJ at one of my parties before. Yeah. And then from there is when we like build a whole connection from there to do an event. At, some, at a venue that used to be called Spacey Beaver. But Future took that shit away from us, man. Yeah, we was gonna do an event oh, over that there. That sounds so familiar. Where what was that? It's like I think it's like on Forty Eighth Street, Space like around Forty Eighth Street or or Fifty Third Street, something like that. Or... But they changed that shit. Like they changed to a whole different name now. We was gonna do an event there, and then the club owner gave the freaking venue to Future for that day. So then afterwards, I had a I had bought a camera, and then Mocha, me and Mocha started like uh, talking more and stuff like that. We was gonna use the camera to do a promo shoot. We had did the promo shoot. But when Future took the shit, it didn't work out no more. So then we ended up doing a, uh, another collaboration together, which was a cookout. Mm -hmm. And then from there, Mocha was like, yo, you got the camera, bro. I ain't gonna hold you. We need somebody to like film some content for us and you know how to edit a little. I'm like, I bet. I'm gonna see, man. He's like, yo, please, bro. Like, that should be dope. You feel mm -hmm. me? I'm like, I bet. I hear you. Bro, that day I'm in the crib chilling. That's when Maury made his shirts, um, Legendary Anatomy. Mm hmm then he came with it like, yo, hit your shirt. Hard too. Yeah, that shit was hard. Never Maury, one, and Maury gave hard, me that bro. shirt. Fuck you, yeah, Maury. I, I never like, got one, bro. But mm -hmm. it's alright, bro. Maury gave me that shirt. Mind you, I hadn't did, I didn't even do laundry. So I had nothing but new good jeans I could have wore. I have no shirts. Maury gave me that shirt. So prior to that, I didn't want to go to the to the 4th of July thing that Mocha invited me to. Mm. I'm like, man, I'm not going. I don't got no shirt, bro. Fuck man, that shit. You got no fit, bro. Nigga, I'm laying down, bro. I just get a call from Mocha, bro. Nigga, it was like 10 minutes away from my location. He was like, yo, where you at? I'm like, I'm in the crib. Nigga's like, yo, like, did you forget we got to go to Jersey? And they came to pick me up. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm like, all right, bet, bet, bet. And Maury gave me the shirt. I wore the shirt. I went there, bro. That was like. Mind you, I, I used to hate partying because high school shit, niggas used to run down and shit and shoot shit up and fuck shit up all the time. So oh. I didn't really, I didn't want to really be in a party thing no more. And plus, bro, you just took me back. The team that I was with, bro, we I had got into it with one of the other cats that was in the team. So because of that, I'm like, yo, you know what? This dude got a, a pure hatred for me. So, you know, I don't want to ever deal with this dude. And at that point, I was done with the party. And mind you, even when I used to throw parties with everybody, they knew I didn't like partying. They knew I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, fuck it, but I know how to throw parties. I know how to organize. Right. I know how to manage shit. So I'm like, I could do that. We could do it. Right. For me, so, me, bro. Bro. Your shit crazy, bro. You know what you're doing. It was lit, bro. You know what you're doing. For me, so we went crazy. there. It was Shiggy hosting that shit. I got the videos of all of that shit. Shiggy was hosting that shit. It was the first time we all met Shiggy. We on stage. Mm -hmm. They giving me a band. I got all access pass, bro. Go, bro. I could get in everywhere. I'm skipping the line, everything. And they, yo, this went on for like three and a half years, bro. Everywhere we go. Nigga, like, I'm going to the door. The security recognize me. Oh, day, yeah, come in. Mm -hmm. but all because I'm a part of the team. And that shit right there, bro, that shit was amazing. I mean, but after a while, you know, that shit gets boring. Mm. Same shit every time. You see the same people. Nothing wrong with change, same bro. Same party. You growing. Same shorties. After a while, I'm like, man, listen, bro. That's growth, bro. You growing. I need to be around pure focus. Yeah. Figuring out what my future is and getting shit together. Because the party and shit is fun and all, but after a while, it gets played out. Get too regular. Wait, so how was like, um, how was it when you first got signed like overseas, though? Bro. I mean, when, you, when I get signed overseas, hold on, let me put this out. You get signed overseas, I just pretty much, first, obviously, you got to get an agent. So pretty much throughout my whole last year in college, for my last senior year, pretty much the agents start to approach you. Yeah. See what kind of route you're trying to aim for, such and such, stuff like wait, that. Wait, so you wait the last year to, to approach you? No, I mean, I mean, yes. Yes and no. They could come to you early. I mean, the back time, it was different than before. Like, for me, my, my, my experience was different. Yeah. Like, I had to, like, agents would hit me through fire Facebook Messenger, like, yo, oh, shit. I've been following you, such and such for such and yeah, such. Yeah, nowadays, people, gonna, people ain't going to think that's legit. Nah, I worry. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, mm -hmm. before they would do that, like, some of them probably do that. They might pull up to a game. They might, you know what I'm saying? Depending on where your agent is from. Just so happens that a lot of my agent, a lot of the people that were approaching me mm -hmm. to be my agent were from overseas. Oh, so wow. that's another thing because I never really had aspirations of like playing yeah. pro for real. I just was like, 
all right, let's go see what's up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then just see what's up. Like, that's really what it was. All right, let me, all right, I'm going to get a little bit of bread. Let me see what's up. All right, cool. But I never really took it where I was like, oh, I want to go to league. Mm. Never. It was that. Never was that for me. I was fulfilled with getting my scholarship, bro. Yeah. My mom's, my mom's yeah. burden was off her chest. Yeah. You got what I'm trying to say? So, all right, cool. So now, after, when I, my first year was kind of shaky because now it's like, my mom was like, yo, like, Thank God you took care of anything. You went to college. Do you really have to keep hooping? So it was like a little bit of a situation where it was like they didn't want me to slide. Yeah. I'm like, nah, I think I, I think it would be okay for me to slide. We're going to be all right. Situations like that. So for like the first two years of my career, it was a little bit shaky between me and my parents. Like me going back and forth. They didn't want me to be out there too long. Like I could have got a job out here. Like why not give this, I could get the same bread. Yeah. Doing whatever it's hard for them to believe because it's not the lead. Yeah, because also, you know, our African parents, like they don't, I didn't really care if they came to my games in high school yeah. or in college. I don't really care about that, bro. Shit, my dad that never was, came to none of that shit. Right, you know what I'm saying? My mom mm-hmm. seen me play. The first time my mom seen me play, I was in college. Wow. If she if she seen me play in high school, I know she was clueless watching the games. Yeah, yeah. But if she seen me playing in high school, it was not because she watched the game. It's because she tuned into News Twelve mm-hmm. and it was like, oh, these Bronx teams and this is the yeah. I remember when I'm they winning. used to have you in the news too. So that was that was yeah. the only time she would ever see me with basketball. You know what I'm saying? I didn't really look at it where I was like, oh, I want my mom at the game. I'm gonna be crying if she don't come. Yeah. I don't. I feel. I feel like she don't support me. No, hell no, hell no. Yeah. She's supporting me by putting a roof over my head. Facts. <laughs> Facts. You get what I'm trying to say? A lot of people she don't, don't need know to that. come to my game. A lot of people don't know that. She coming to my game, it's just up to her. But I never was like, you know what I mean? It's no, but you gotta understand where I grew up is different. Like how we grew up was different. So it was how we see certain things, you know what I'm saying? We look at the bigger picture. Facts. And we had to learn how to be mature early. You know what I'm saying? I was working since I was 14 years old, bro. Yeah. My brother 15 right now, he don't even think about working. Shit. It's different. We seen things at 10, 9, 8, 12, 14, 13 that, bro. I'll never forget, man. Exactly. That you would never forget. Yeah, I'll never forget. Yeah, I I asked my dad for for bread one time, man. Exactly. My dad said some stingy ass shit to me, bro. In situations like like that, it's why we go get a job. Like, I was like, bro, I'm trying to fight my life for yeah, all these four years to try to get a scholarship. What he told me, bro, I'm like, all right, say less, nigga. I'm going to get money one way exactly, or another, bro. Nigga. We had, we learned, <laughs> yeah. bro, we had to learn how to mature, bro. We learned, we, yeah. we, we mature pretty early, bro. We bloomed really early. We learned how to get money. We learned how to hustle. We learned how to go get it, basically. Mm-hmm. Hard work, bro. Like I was telling you before about your pops and all the hard work that mm-hmm. he really was a boss our whole lives, bro. <laughs> he's yeah, the first African man that I know from our culture. Yeah, I never that's seen him been work a boss. I never seen in him the work United for States. Our family and shit like that is bosses yeah. back where we from for sure. Exactly. That's and that ain't even out no question. They but I'm talking about here in the United States. Your pops is the first that I know of, and I still yeah. to this day. You know what I'm saying? He, yeah. I mean, he's the old out V one type shit, and they showed us hard work, bro. Our parents Facts. showed us bad hard work, bro. If we had them, we wouldn't be like, I wouldn't brush off that my mom's not coming to my game. I never really worried about that. My mom came to. I had times I got pissed off though. I ain't gonna hold you, bro. I get it, nah, bro. Man, yo, like, I get it, yo. And it wasn't even like I was pissed off. Nigga, like my parents wasn't there. I get it, nigga. I was pissed off because, bro, I'm running the race. Yeah, I gave it all. Yeah. I get, I get to the point. finish line. I'm hyped. Mm-hmm. I ran a good time. I beat my previous time. And I turn around, I look. Even the people that lost, right? That I beat them. Their family's there to hug them. Mm. It's okay. You're going to do better the next time. Okay. Cheering them on. Even, yo, even in the stands, bro. While I'm running and I'm beating them, I hear their parents cheering them on. And I'm just like, bro, what the fuck? <laughs> yo, feel me out. The one time, bro, I had um Maury come to one of my games, bro. Yo, that shit, yo. I said, I said games um to one of the track meets. I'm running a race, mind you. Like I'm mad tired. This when I was recovering from a hamstring injury mm. and shit like that. So I'm like, yo, I get off the blocks. This is this is a 400 meter. I get off the blocks. 
the moment we started getting off the blocks, I, I was fucking around in the first like 80 meters because I just wasn't like really trying to go all out. Right. I wanted to save my speed a little bit and go all out when I hit the 200 or the 150. Bro, I take off. I just hear noises. Everybody passed me, bro. I'm last place. I'm like, oh, hell no. Nah. And then, and then you can hear the commentator on the mic talking about, oh, it looks like Mr. Doombie is having a hard start. <laughs> oh, shit. It looks like Mr. Doombie is still, oh, it looks like Mr. Doombie is taking eighth place. Right? Bro, tell me how I come from like, and he lied to it, it wasn't even eighth place. I was on like sixth place. Yo, once I hit like the 150 meter, it's like my eyes just don't doubt. Yeah. And I see everything in slow motion on some matrix shit, bro. Oh, some tunnel vision. Dead ass. Like just straight tunnel vision. And I see everybody frozen in front of me. All of a sudden, it's like a light just switched. Started going off. I went from sixth place all the way to catching up to the nigga that was in first place, bro. And then you hit, and I, like when I was on like, like the 200 meter or like I think it was like the 250 meter, I hear this nigga Maury screaming. You know, like and it's funny, I was able to block out everybody's voice, and I heard Maury screaming. But prior to that, my legs was kind of giving out on me. Mm. Then I heard this motherfucker screaming, "Run, nigga, run!" <laughs> Yo, <son. laughs> that's some Maury shit, Yo, dude. Nigga, run, nigga, run. Yo, I'm hearing this nigga like, "Yeah, that's my brother. That's, that's my brother. Shit. Run, nigga, that's run." Maury shit Yo, me. all of a sudden, like a light just switch. I just started. <laughs> Doom, doom, doom. Caught up to the nigga. Boom. We all crossed the finish line. I had reach. Boom. Hit it. And I walk off. I'm like, yeah, nigga, I did this shit. Nigga, Maury getting lit. He just talking crazy. Yeah, that's my brother, nigga. Fuck out of here. That's how we do it. Feel me? But just imagine that though. Like, you have that at the games or or like whatever sport you play, right? Nah. That shit's gonna motivate you to even play 10 times harder. Yeah, bro. But you, you get what I'm saying? Cause if Maury probably wasn't there, I probably wasn't gonna win that. Mm. Feel me? Because right after that shit, I won a club nationals. I won a gold medal at my, I think at a club nationals, recovering mm. from that freaking hamstring in, uh, thing injury. This is when I was like going through therapy and everything that was really fucking with me crazy, right. and I won first place. But that time, bro, nigga, I won because niggas did me dirty, bro. My teammates did some bullshit. Feel me? And I fuck with, I fuck with a lot of them. I fuck with my Jamaicans, but I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to call this nigga out, bro. It's some some other dude that had just came from Jamaica not too long ago. Mm. He gets on the team. They the always playing team, around right? at every practice, bro. Whenever I'm trying to practice, these niggas is giggling, laughing, and talking shit about people all the time. It was one of them that came from Jamaican, and the other one, he's Jamaican, but he came from like a Juco college. And they always used to play around, joke around all the time, bro. And me, I like to be serious. Yeah. I'm trying to get the work done, bro, and get it out the way. I'm fasting, and these niggas, we running in the sun, hot as fuck, all that, bro. I had already got injured from the hamstring injury, so now they replaced um, me with him on the relays. So now yeah. I'm not even able to race because I'm still recovering, and my main coach wasn't giving me no attention. So I had to get uh, uh, attention from, uh, from 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 my other coach. Um, his name is um, Coach Stoney, Jamaican coach, too, amazing coach. Shout out Coach Stoney. Yeah. Coach Stoney did a perfect job, bro. Every time we was training, bro, we was doing the pool workouts. This dude was not playing. He was tr yo, he was going ten times harder on me. Than everybody else mm. that's in shape. I'm like, bro, you, I'm like, yo, I got a hamstring injury. He said, I don't care. He seen that. He said, I don't care. You got to recover. You, bro. He seen bro, it in you. This is what these niggas did on the race. When I'm recovering from the hamstring injury, I still felt pain, but I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to race. I'm good. I'm supposed to run a 200 meter and I'm supposed to run a 400 meter. No, no, I'm supposed to run a four by one uh, relay. The 200 meter, I ran it. I didn't do so well. I came out in like, third place mm. right so i sat down and i'm chilling i'm chilling the whole time i didn't know that i had to run the, the relay so my coach hits me up like yo are you ready for the relay i'm like yeah i, I got you i'm gonna just go warm up i warm up sit down i'm ready now my coach looks at me he's like yo are you all right mm. i'm like yeah i'm like why are you asking he's like no nah, i'm just asking like are you all right i'm like yeah i'm perfect i'm ready to run the race he's like no nah, you're not gonna no nah, you're not gonna run I didn't know why he said that shit. So I was confused. So on the way on our way back home, I'm talking with Coach Stoney and he's like, yo, Doombia, like you were supposed to run the race. Why did you lie to me and tell me 
that you feel like you're fully recovered and you're not recovered yet. You still having problems with your hamstring. Mm, he noticed. No, no. He was told. I wasn't. Oh. I wasn't. These niggas that was running the relay went behind my back and told the coach. Funny shit. Oh, he's fully uh thing. He's not fully recovered. He can't run the race. Funny um, shit. he don't want to run the race, but he but 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 he don't want to disappoint y'all. He don't want to tell y'all type shit. So they told my coach that my coach pulled me off. So when I like when I'm in the car with Stoney, Coach Stoney is telling me that, well, they told us that you didn't want to run the race. I'm yeah. like, no, I I'm like your coach. We trained for months for this shit. You think I ain't want to fucking run? Yeah. I'm trying I'm trying to run back again to know that yeah, I'm fully good now. Everything's good. I'm like, I feel good. I'm just nervous. That's it. Right, right. And I didn't tell nobody that shit. I didn't speak to nobody. People I'm like over that. there sitting down in the bleachers, like, yo, in the bleachers, listening to a fucking Phil Collins in the air tonight. Ready? I can feel it coming in me. Yeah, I'm just there, yo. I'm just there li listening to that song so, just because I knew I wanted to kill that damn relay, bro. Yeah, just to hear I can't race, bro. <laughs> I'm in the car. Coach Stoney told me that shit. And then I was like, yo, what the fuck? I was pissed off. I really wanted to fight these niggas, bro. I really wanted to fight them. It was two of them that did it. The two of them that did it. I was pissed. Went out there, run that, run that yo, race, bro. I was so pissed. We in the car. Coach Stoney was like, yo, don't worry about it. We're going to train some more. And by the time you go there, I promise you, you're going to beat them. Mm. That's what he told me. Now, when we came, it was club nationals. So we qualified. We did good qualifying times to even go compete in Texas, but I never really went afterwards. But I won my gold medal at the club nationals. I ran a 200-meter race, came in second place. Boom. Won the um, silver medal. Then ran the 400-meter race. That's the whole track field. Yeah. All for, all for the hamstring injury, got everything set. Once that gun went off... And hey, everything just zoned out again. You remember your time, bro? I think I ran like 50 flat. This is when I, like, when I was recovering, I ran like a 50 flat. 400? Yeah. The 400 meter, yeah. In 50 seconds. Flat. And actually, it was going to be lesser, but the wind was blowing in our direction to slow us down. So it was actually going to be like 49. So, yo, bro, bro. I ran... <laughs> When I'm I got to that finish too, line, that's tough. when I got to that, because it's funny, my coach, my main coach, I was supposed to be freaking helping me out with a, a freaking re, like a freaking recovery and shit. He didn't do shit. Really? Me? So I'm running the race. I mean, you do me a go, 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 right? I hit that finish line. I'm walking and I'm hearing the whole team cheering for me. And the two niggas that made me pull out of that race are clapping their hands. And I looked at them niggas I'm like, get the fuck out my face, nigga. Prove niggas now I got a gold medal. Nigga. And they both ran. They couldn't make the time. Satisfaction, nigga. They both ran. They couldn't make the time, bro. And that shit was fucked up. That shit, yo. When I tell you, I, ha I had that grudge in me. Yeah. I'm like, I'm going to demolish this race. And I could have ran faster. That's the funny part. My first 80 meters, I swear to God, I was fucking around. That's tough, bro. I was fucking around. I was chilling, just, just relaxing. When I was supposed to drive, yeah. and on 150, you relax. Then on the 200, you pick up again. Right. And only relax on the 350. This nigga ran, y'all. <laughs> Niggas don't like running, bro. Yeah. This nigga ran, y'all. I ain't gonna lie, but no funny shit. Running. I used to be watching like, yo, this yo, nigga running really saved my life, track, bro. Track and field saved my life, bro. I'm sure it did, bro. I swear to God. Because if I wasn't running track and field, I swear to God, I probably would have been in the corner doing shit, bro. Bro. Off rip. Oh, God. you tell it, bro? There's reasons why I stayed where I was at when I was over there. Because <laughs> if I came back here, there's always going to be some shit. Yeah, and I would tell this, bro, this is a great thing about universities, bro. Especially as a college university, bro. Like, tell the truth. I will tell my coach, I say, your coach, like, I don't want to go back home. If I go back home, is it going to be some smoke? Like, it, it, it's, it's not, yeah, it's, it's yeah. not going to be a good thing. hang out with the wrong crowd. Yeah. You know, like, it's yeah. not good influences back there. Okay, Moose, go take your girl out to go get some, go to the movies. Allegedly used to slide me some chicken. Fuck that. They used to slob me some bread. Yo, take your girl out to eat, Moose. <laughs> Come back, nigga. Because they paying these niggas now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fact, yeah, yeah. They Fuck paying that, now. They got to pay. But um, if I'm not mistaken, I think even back in the days, it, I think it, it was the NCAA's law that they had to give you about like, I think like $60 a week. It was supposed to give you that. Yeah, I might have to check that out. But yeah, the only time we really to give like, you I can give you, bro, I'm about to give you, the man. College you know, give I can, we can really go there about mm -hmm. the like bread that you get in college and all that shit, yeah. bro. We could go there for sure. Like, so how like the pay though? Do, do, do they actually pay though? Boom, let's go. 
I've had school offer mm-hmm. me whips to go to their school, bro. I have had Man. school offer to take care of my mom's type shit. To go to that school, and that shit sometimes backfires a lot. Sometimes. I've had schools where I could have went with my man's package deal shit, and, and it's they get really and it's, too? yeah, it is really like yeah, yeah for sure. Play D one, D one, all wow. everything I'm talking about. D one never spoke to D two ever. D three never, other than D one only. I've had bro, this facts, bro. I've had schools. Like on visits and shit, bro. I've had, bro. It's just be, it's college scene is incredible. So if I went through this hat just for a main, main mid major level type shit, mm-hmm. imagine what these real oh, yeah, like professional yeah, Yo, game. bro, that shit that Ray Allen was talking about. And he was Jesus and then he got game, bro. That shit's facts. They what? And he got game with Ray Allen. Mm-hmm. That shit is facts, bro. Oh yeah, cool, everything man. he did at bro, that college shit is fucking facts. Everything. If I wanted to manifest that in my college visit, I could have. Type shit. Like, it's insane, bro. I could go on for days about all that shit. But as far as, like, the money spread and all that situation, like, remember I, earlier I had told you and mentioned about that with the winter time when it's mm-hmm. Christmas break, athletes, we got to stay on campus. Yeah. We get bread for that. Envelopes of cash. After that, every... But, that, but that's what the school, though. The school gives that, though. Uh, the school gives that. Straight to us? Yeah. As athletes? Yeah. We getting them shit from the coaches and shit, though. Like I told, I just told you, bro. My, my they was Alleg- kicking me bread. Allegedly, they, bro. I just got Henny in my system. Fuck the alleged shit. Bro. I'm, not <laughs> I'm not in college. Yeah, we no definitely pump this shit on Rumble. <laughs> I'm not on college no more, bro. <laughs> Fuck all that, bro. It's not the same coaching staff. Them, they oh, went through mad college. They're not bro. there no more. They're dumb. Nah, of course not. Only maybe just one of them is there. Only Damn. one from when I was there four years, and my coaching staff changed been multiple times. You know what's fucked up? After bro? every home game, we get like, at the time, we get 15 cash, 10 cash, 15, 20 but cash. I still think like it's fucked up how like players who like took money get punished for actually taking money when, when in actuality their family were in need of the money. You get what I'm saying? Because I 100% the agree. The schools is not paying paying them. Right, 100% and they, agree, and they utilizing because... the kids to make millions and millions of dollars on off of them. Don't it make sense to at least compensate them for that a bit? Help their family out? Make, make sure their family's in a good position so that the, the kids can actually produce more for you. Because now they know you're taking care of their family, so now they bro, know they're going to have to work to Everything, bro, we was going through it when I was in college just for these kids to eat now. Just so these kids could get the, the, the letter intent with some money on it now in their pocket, bro. Because, bro, like, for example, I wore, I wore Oakley goggles to play mm-hmm. basketball, bro. Oakley goggles to wear to play basketball. Shit. I used to change my lenses per season, like or whatever during the season, like white lenses, according to Jersey and yeah. shit. So that was like a whole little wave period. So mm-hmm. people would probably come to the games with goggles on, mm-hmm. imitating me. Damn. Why am I not getting chicken for that? Yo, why I can't eat off that? Real shit though. We gonna stay on this, but we are gonna get right back on it. How was how was the experience, right? When you walked out for like your first game, and you seen mad people just there to watch y'all play. I how you lie. felt? I love that question because I got a, a, a funny ass story that day, bro. So okay, let's say whatever time if i can remember bro whatever if there's a t- if there's a game whatever time that game is you have to report at the gym two hours or minimum hour and a half before the game oh and nobody there you have to get taped you got to get dressed you got to warm up you got to shoot your shots you got to get your layups you got to just pretty much start to get ready for the game pretty much and it's going to take that amount of time for real meet with athletic trainers get your stretching on whatever Everything is in that time frame, one hour and a half, two hours before the game. So we got to get there before. My first ever college game was mm-hmm. against LIU. LIU. Yeah, Brooklyn. College, LIU. LIU, Brooklyn came to my school. They just went and finished. I think they, I believe they, they just D1, finished. They D1, right? Yeah, they D1 yeah, at they the time. D1. They was NEC. They just finished winning the tournament. They just finished winning their league, their conference. They just finished going to the tournament, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, from their tournament, from their conference. So, I'm supposed to be there an hour and a half, two hours beforehand, bro. Yeah. bro. The manager had to come to my room and get me because I was over, I overslept. Damn. To go to my first, first game. college game ever, bro. 
You know what's so crazy? My head coach still to this day don't know. So they was there the whole time. They didn't know you held me there. down. My my manager, shout out to my son, so five, bro. I love you, Vado. This nigga ran to my room. God, Moose, you late? How late was you? Because for example, it's a it's a routine. You come in, we come in. So we would have a situation where the big men roll, like the bigs, the forwards. Mm. We would warm up at a specific time while we were warming up, taking out shots. The yeah. guards would be stretching. But even before that, you got to come, everybody got to come at a specific time, depending on how you get taped. Mm -hmm. You either get taped by the trainers or you put an ankle brace on. You had to. That was There was no if, ands, or buts between those. As soon as before the even season starts, the coach asks you, are you going to get taped or you want braces? Damn. They probably just going to give you braces anyway because they have to protect your ankles. I mean, they really got to protect everything, bro. Like, I got a lot of shit done at college, like dental stuff. All that shit. They have to protect your face. They have to protect everything. People don't know this. You know what I'm saying? So if you had like cavities and shit, yo, I had root canals, bro. They fix everything? Everything. But it's, they have to fix your image because you're representing them, bro. Yeah. I've had in situations where I had root canals the day of games, bro. Had to go play with my mouth swollen, nigga. Fighting for rebounds. I don't feel nothing. Shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Bad work. Yeah, bro. But yeah, just you just this you Wait, don't so, notice it at, at that early right, so age you, and shit, right, bro. So this is how you said the story, bro. You said um the manager came and the got The manager came and, and got me out of my room, bro. I was pretty much like 30 minutes late. And how the college shit work, you kind of 30 minutes late before the game? Yeah, type shit. Like I got there was probably like 30 minutes ago before the game. Damn. But the thing about college is I don't the and within those two hours, I don't see my coach. Yeah. At all until it's like the last thirty minutes. And when he came and so got he me, he got me, got me. You know, he came and got me at the pretty much at the at the best amount of time mm -hmm. where I'm not gonna see him. I'm not gonna see um. I like I'm not gonna see my coach pretty much. So he came me at a time where I I was late, yes for mm -hmm. sure, but not late to where I'm gonna miss the yeah. game. But I was late, bro. I was late, bro, to my first college game. But all athletes it? we consider that shit. Like, how was it when you? Walked, it was crazy. You that tunnel? Like, was you nervous though? Like, was you nervous out, in that moment? I walk out. We get escorted out. We have the dancers. We have the cheerleaders, bro. You walk out. You see the arena. Everybody's cheering on and shit. And then that's when it sinks in that this is real, bro. Like because I come from a little school, bro. So the, I mean, the most people I'm gonna see in the stadium probably like a thousand for real. At my school in high school for real. Everybody standing around, there's not enough seats. So it's in college, so yeah, it's type shit. In my high school. Oh, in no, high so school. I'm, so I'm trying to compare it to high school. High school, yeah, the yeah, max no, a thousand. High school is a smaller like, facility, though. Exactly. So in college, my school, my arena could put up to five, six bands, I think. At the time. So first game of the season. Five, six thousand people? Yeah, yeah. Damn. In the arena. Bro, it's crazy. I done played in front of like 20,000 people before, bro. Incredible. Wait, 20,000 people? Incredible. In college or I, you mean I've, like professionally? In college, I played in front of, of, of an are in the arena of 20,000 people. It had to been a championship game though, right? No, it was when we played Louisville. I played at Louisville. It, it, oh, it, they had the biggest. Um... They had a big arena. And when I went to the Yum Stadium, and I went to, when we played Louisville, Louisville had just won the championship. National championship. The national championship. They just won the NC. They just won the tourney type shit. So we played them in the in the, that was our off season. That was like our off conference out off out, out of mm -hmm. conference. Games. It's like a friendly game. More or less, but it still count for the record. Bro, they killed shit. us, bro. They killed us, bro. Right. <laughs> they killed us, bro. Like when I went to college, bro, I went to I played like teams like Bro, they killed us, bro. I went to like All right, so what team? What team would you say was like y'all like arch nemesis? Like whenever y'all knew y'all had a game against that team, y'all was like, man, fuck them guys, man. They just nice as hell, and we hate them niggas. We really trying to beat them. Nice like, as hell, hate them, nah. Yeah, we can match their energy a lot of teams, mm -hmm. but like that that come that that team where it just felt like a rivalry, bro. Yeah, there's a few Stony Brook because that's the battle of Long Island. Yeah, I have a couple. Of All four years in my school year, we played against Manhattan. Manhattan recruited me, so every year we played against Manhattan, which is crazy, mad crazy matchups, bro. 
Uh, Iona was another school at the time. Yeah, um, Iona. For some reason, we always play LIU. Some yeah, because I mean, it's all around like the same area, yeah, so it's, it's likely. Like, whatever, it's the East. LIU, but yeah. Um, no knock on LIU, but I'm just saying, like, we could have played. We played a lot of like those schools and shit like that during the, like the out of conference games. But like a team that I like rivalry, I can remember if I want to mm-hmm. go. If I say out of conference, I'm gonna probably say Manhattan because bro, those games was crazy. It was and that then nice. yeah, they was nice, and we was good too. But the games was always intense, OT shit like that. Um, in the conference, maybe a Drexel. Drexel. Drexel was out in Philadelphia. You ever played Duke? We never played Duke, bro. I never played Duke. Like a big high major school, yeah. I played. I played against like Purdue. My sophomore year had a pretty decent game against him. Oregon State. Hey, I know Oregon. Yeah, Oregon yeah, State. You know, it's funny when Oregon. I was in high school, I wanted, I wanted to attend Oregon, and Oregon. I wanted, and, and I wanted to like apply for the football team too. So I was gonna run, um, uh, what's call called? I was gonna like run, run, like be a running back or be a punt returner. Feel me? And there was some guy that used to run. His name is Tom. Uh, I think Thomas. I forgot his name. I can't remember his his full name, but his last name was Thomas, and he had got drafted to uh, what's what's this team? I think Kansas Chiefs. He had got signed to them. Yo, that dude was too freaking elite. Every video I see, like highlights from Oregon State, bro. That shit used to feel like I was in a movie, bro. I'd be watching, and I feel like I'm in there running. Like I could see myself win the helmet of the running back. Running with the ball, yeah, going to yeah. touchdown type shit. I always wanted to go there. That was the one college that I could say they was elite for sure. Nah, I ain't gonna lie. When I went to Oregon, it was crazy, bro. Because when you go there, it's yeah, either you, got a you big ass arena. That I went to Oregon State though, but when I went to Oregon State, that was like the Oregon State Beavers. But when I went there, when you go oh, to when you go to see Sam, Oregon, um, bro, thing. this dude went there. Cook, um, Brandon Cook, Brandon Cook, Brandon, Brandon Cook. Cook. He used to play for the Saints. I remember Cook. I remember Cook. He went. He he went there. I remember. He Cook. went there. He went to Oregon. Mm-hmm. To Oregon, Oregon State. What you talking about? Yeah. They wear a black and orange. Yeah, yeah. Right? Beavis, yeah. Now black the one I'm orange. talking about, That's I think green. it's University of Oregon. Green. Yeah, they wear green and yellow and black. That's what I was going to touch on, bro. When you go to fucking Oregon, bro, it's either you wear orange, bro, or you wear that fucking yeah, orange, yeah, yeah. Uh, fucking green. Yeah. They got their colors. What I'm talking about, like, when I, we had went to, like, a restaurant, bro, and they were split in half, bro. And I think they both D1. Yeah, they, they both, both D1. D1. How amazing? Because, bro, you know, Nike and Oregon, bro. Nike was, you know what I'm saying? Bro, they they, 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 the creator, crazy. The creator of Nike went, is from Oregon. He went to Oregon. That's where the, a lot of the headquarters shit really, yo, really, really is. They're that's freaking, true. yo, their stadium to everything. But Even really, look at it, bro. That's why they get top of the line J's, top of the line, all those, they own Oregon PE sneakers. That's because it's really, it's the Nike nigga from there. He's from there. Yeah. Sure. If you Even in the track way, and field, bro, yeah, they be dominating. It. It's dumb. And then it was like Texas A&M at that time. And stuff like that, and then I like ain't I don't know no sport. Oregon don't really dominate. I mean, they don't really like track win, and field. Win, 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 win. But they, they had really, any track and field too. They really top the top, top, top. Really up there. Really. And football for sure, though. Yeah, football for sure. Yeah, basketball, football, I don't know. Football, basketball, they always good. I have a good friend too? of mine that went to Oregon. He had went to Oregon with Dylan Brooks at the time. They went to the tournament and shit. Nah, bro. Old team college, bro. And it's funny because. When I was going to college, I already had like an image of it. So when I started yeah. off, I was going to the college in like um in here in Manhattan. Yeah. That shit ass. It's not like on a campus. You went to Manhattan? Yeah, bro. Um I went to fucking That's B- why I want to go to Manhattan. I went to BMCC. Okay. Don't get me wrong, there was mad fire shorties over there, bro. Like I met a, a a couple of good people over there. And I had my freaking English class and stuff like that. I think it was um uh yo, funny thing, I'm a good ass writer, bro. In my class, I was doing great in English, bro. I was passing that class more than every other class, bro. And I was doing computer science yeah. and computer tech and technology and shit. So that shit was on a different level. It's hard as fuck. It's annoying, but I would know how to do everything. I could take this computer apart and put it together yeah. easily. And I was doing that shit since I was like eight years old. Nah, I know. You feel me? Yeah, I was some so, wild. Yeah, I was some different motherfuckers. Yeah, though, so for me, I knew I could do that. So when I'm talking to these motherfuckers, they show me letters and mathematics and everything. And cold, I'm like, yo, bro, listen, I understand this allegedly on my own. The way y'all teaching me, I don't like y'all method, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is easier. 
because I can get it how I want to get it. But the way y'all teaching me, bro, like, I don't need to do all this shit. This shit mad long. It's a long process. We got to use Java. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm tired of this shit, man. But that shit's give me a headache. It, it went for a while, and then after a while, I was just doing too much at the same time. I yeah. had to hustle. I had to pay my own college from my own pocket, bro. So, you know, my pops Jeez. told me straight up, nigga, you nigga, but figure that shit out, my nigga. You feel me? You better hope you get a scholarship. And then I was running track and field, but it wasn't producing as it was. And the college had promised me a scholarship. Right. And a lot of people don't know this. I got promised a scholarship from a college. I won't say the name of it. You can say it, bro. Nah, nah, fuck that, bro. Nah. Statue of limitations nah, 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 is nah. up. Yeah. Nah, bro. Nah, nah, I don't say it. I'm so, fucking with you, bro. I was supposed to, because after I won that club nationals, yeah. the college dude reached out to me. The head coach reached out to me. You know, like I was I was committing to them, and I went there to go visit. And then when I go there to go visit now, after a while, I'm like, yo, I'm dubbing all other colleges. They not telling me that their scholarship ran out. I'm like, bro, so y'all made me- Yeah, was it an orange school? An orange? Yeah, was it the, the school colors orange? No, nah, they wear blue. They wear blue. CT? Is it? Is it? Is it in the city? In the city? Yeah, they're in the city. Columbia? Columbia? Nah, nah, hell no. If Columbia would have, nigga, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If Columbia reach out to you, nigga. So they want the you, city? right? Yeah. yeah, but it was a JUCO, though. It was a JUCO for sure. Mm. You know what I mean? No, no, actually, I think it was a JUCO or a D3. But yeah. Scholarship so that scholarship, didn't work bro. out, bro. So at the same time, nigga, I got to pay. I got to pay everything, bro. I'm like, yo, listen, I got to make my money, pay for my college, and get shit going. Feel right, me? Right. So. I'm like, yo, I got to get it how I can. I did whatever, man. For me, I, I had to do what to do. Keep paying my shit. And at the same time, I was doing parties to make extra money. Right. And then I had made some sacrifices. And in the process, I ended up losing shit because mm. of that. Because out of friendship. Feel me? Right. I did certain things to help certain people out. And I ended up losing bad on that. And that's when, like, at the same time, my college shit wasn't going right. And then I had to... I had to exit. I had to get out of college. I had no option. Feel me? So, oh, yeah, crazy. But look at it. But look at it now. Life took a whole turn. Nah, yeah, I mean, sometimes mm-hmm. certain situations aren't for everybody. That ass, bro. I mean, saying not saying that you can't benefit from it or benefit elsewhere. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, you benefited elsewhere. Hell you see yeah. what I mean? In retrospect, I mean, you Gucci. <laughs> I tell you, bro. You know what I I tell you, niggas done tried. To get in the way of everything, bro. Just like everything else, bro. Yo, for real, everything for real. you could think of, niggas done try to get in the way. And then you know, and then you know what kind of scares them? And I know it scares y'all. And I know y'all gonna know who y'all are. You feel me? And look, I got nothing but love for everybody. I got no hate in my heart. I got nothing but love for everybody. And I know it's gonna hurt. And what really hurts them is that they do the dirty shit and I don't say nothing. Mm. I keep quiet to the point that yo niggas will feel me they'll be on the dirty show goes so intense to the point they will start telling rumors to people and those same people that they're telling it to is coming to tell me and then the dumb part about it is they would tell some of these dumb ass fake ass bullshit fallacy of rumors to people that I knew before they knew them and like, bro, they owe you no loyalty, you fucking idiot. Right, right. Yeah. Like, nah, for real. Y'all real life degenerates then. Y'all real fucking yeah, yo, like let bygones be bygones, You feel bro. me? And yo, but, <laughs> but, but, but this, but this, yo, and then this is like the, the thing about these situations because these niggas wouldn't dare fix their mouth, right? On a one-on-one, lock the door. Nobody here. Mm. On a one-on-one, not one of y'all would ever dare face me face to face and talk how y'all really be talking behind the keyboards or to other people y'all wouldn't dare do that shit bro because even my own worst enemies wouldn't dare do that shit to me i look but listen though i'm still a civilian i'm not a gangbanger i'm not in none of that shit for me man i stuff for the law allegedly we ain't never been a part of, none me, of that but i can tell you this much they would never ever and what scares them the most is like bro they threw jabs feel me Listen, man, I'm an offensive fighter, nigga. I'm like Mayweather, my nigga. You ain't going to touch me. However you try it, nigga, them two steps and that left hook is going to hit you. Same, like, you're not going to do nothing. <laughs> nothing. He and the same way as how I move. <laughs> bro, real shit, the same way as how I move in a professional level, bro, is the same way how I move with my hands, bro. Respectfully. And when they need to work, they're going to do their work. Because if I put them paws on you, I promise you, it's going to be two things. 
Is it you gonna sit on your ass or you gonna be shaking on the ground with your eyes all white Energy. off rip? Energy. Feel me? And I could do that either that way or niggas want to pick up certain things to what? Right. Do what we, they do. We can we do both, what they do, man. We all me? about peace over here, man. We preaching peace though. That's yeah, just some bro. shit he just had to get off his chest real quick. Feel me, y'all. Listen, man. This is going on Rumble. We talking shit. Feel me, Voice of the Era podcast. You feel me? But that be the case. Like, yo, it's mad niggas that got in the way, bro. And then for me, I'm like, listen. I see my dad let go of certain situations. Yeah. Where he he was abandoned by everybody. He had every right to take. He had every right to like, yo, eliminate a motherfucker, bro. Every right. And when we ask him about these certain situations, he'd be like, listen, man. Everything happened for a reason, but I'm alive. Mm. It happened, but I'm still alive. I prevailed. I could have went this route, but if I go this route, what what would happen? Y'all be raised without a father. Feel me? Like, to us, I see my father forgive more than anything. Feel me? He has his way sometimes. Mm. But the nigga always forgave. If, even when niggas turned their back on him, yeah. he still went and helped them out still. I was telling you, bro, I told you earlier. Feel me? This shit crazy. Different, bro. That's why for me, bro, I don't respond. When niggas say shit, I let it go. It's okay, pops man. Is different. Yeah, if he mean, didn't even parent you the way he did, would it be day visuals? You get what I'm trying to say? Different. No. It's not even my pops. Nigga. They visuals came out because you know Sekou, right? Yeah. You know when we used to go to the masjid, it was Sekou there. Everybody when we was growing up going to the masjid right, for like right, Quranic right. school and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Sekou, Sekou used to film. So Sekou used to base yo, this, yo, this is a real top five story I really hear right now. No, like real nigga funny shit. Some yo, shit yo. So Sekou used to film a lot when we used to be in the hood chilling, right? Mm. And at the same time, Sekou used to act. He was in a movie with LeBron too. Like he played like on one of the people sitting in the background and stuff like that. Right. So Sekou was work, working like two jobs. And um, and he had a girl at the time that he was with. She was pregnant. She was about to have a kid. And then I, I was rapping in like 2013. I used to just freestyle. This nigga did everything. Feel me? So I used to just, <laughs> yeah, shit crazy. Yo, y'all don't know about yo, this we, really, we really so, tidy type it everything though. I used it. to rap in 2013, just freestyling, right? Just fucking around. People fuck with it, but I never took it serious. Mm. I didn't, like, nigga, I don't want to fucking rap. I know my parents ain't going to let me rap. Feel yeah. me? And then all that street shit I was doing outside, I never brought it to the crib. So my parents to them, I was an innocent motherfucker. Feel me? So, so it was the same. The goal was this. Sekou was probably going to move because he was going to get married like the next year. He had everything everything set up. He was like, yo, I'm going to get married this year coming up. Yo, and he was like, yo, I'm about to have a son, bro. Mm. And then we'd be on the block chilling. Nigga Sekou was like, yeah, my, my son about to be fucking all y'all daughters, nigga. You feel me? My son going to be that nigga. You know what I'm saying? So we used to be Foul talking nigga. about all that shit. We used to be Foul laughing. Nigga. So Sekou was like, yo, I heard you rap before. Why are you not taking it serious? I'm like, I ain't going to lie, bro. Everybody's doing that shit, bro. Mm. Why I don't want to do something everybody's doing. He's like, it don't matter, bro. You probably you do it differently than other people. I'm like, I don't want to be a part of the trend. I want to create my own trend. I want to be a trend setter. I don't want to be a trend follower. I can't do a trend that everybody's doing. He's like, yo, bro, I ain't gonna hold you, bro. Your music sounds different than everybody else. And like every time I hear your shit and you just freestyling, I could actually recite the lyrics without even having to hear it three times. He's like, yo, not everybody could do that. He's like, yo, you should do it. I'm like, I bet I'm gonna think about it. Then every freaking time we used to be on the block, Sekou would set his phone. He had like a galaxy. He would set his phone down while we all in the hood chilling. Some people smoking, some people rolling dice, everybody chilling, having a conversation. He was documenting all of that shit. So mm. he was like, yo, I'm gonna make my own series of this shit. And he was like, yo, if you do the music thing, I'm gonna direct your music videos, nigga. So that was the plan. I'm like, I bet we're gonna do that shit, but I never really got to make it to the studio in time. Yeah. Then um, it was an Eid that happened uh, 2015 when um, it was Eid. I didn't go out to a party. My other uh, thing, my cousin Zach went to the party and everything. Zach left Sekou at the party. Sekou was like, yo, yo, what up, bro? I'm going to holler at you. Zach was like, yo, I'm going to come right back. Zach left. Some of my boys was there. The rest left. And a situation happened and shit like that. And then the next morning, bro, while we had my dad auto shop, we get a call. Like, yo, say cool gone. Damn. Like, say cool gone. So when I heard that shit, I'm like, Tough one. 
Damn, man, that shit hurt, bro. You ran out there, that shit, yo, that yo, that shit be getting me teary, bro. For sure. Like we hear, yo, say who gone, bro. So I'm just like, damn, bro, like this nigga really not here no more. I'm like, yo, how the fuck? I'm like, yo, like how the, how the shit happened? Who was there? So they Who wasn't there? Stemmed off of say cool. Which... It stemmed off from that, and how it stemmed off from that's crazy because I had a dream, bro. Yo, like I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping and shit. And you know, at that time, you know how that shit go, bro. Your man get body, bro. The only thing that's coming to your mind is it's 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 on sight. Yeah, you feel me? For real. So that was on everybody's mind. And niggas is like allegedly probably started pointing fingers to a certain direction. So everybody was like, yo, it's a green light. Feel me? So just imagine, right? You just chilling and you already had established everything. It's a green light, nigga. You know when you when you when you reach that <laughs> that target, something might go down. Allegedly, right? right? So it, it just happened to be like the night before. Nigga, I'm sleeping. I get I had the dream, bro. I swear to God. And I remember that shit so vividly, bro. This nigga came in my fucking dream, bro. It came my fucking dream, bro. The moment I seen him, bro, I started tearing. Oh. I'm like, yo. I ain't gonna lie, believe in shit like that. Though. Yeah, I'm Somebody like, come in your dream and man. Yeah, that shit fuck like my head up, bro. I'm like, yo. It's a different type of energy. I'm like, who? And you're like, don't worry about it. I'm like, who, bro? Who did it, nigga? Who, bro? Who did it? How did it happen? Who did it? He's like, yo, let it go, bro. Just continue on, let it go. Deep. So for me in that dream, like I had like I had told him I made a promise. I'm like, yo. So I bought a camera, bro. Like mm -hmm. literally, I'm telling, like, I'm having a conversation. I'm like, yo, bro, I yo, I bought a camera, bro. He's like, yo, that's lit, bro. He's like, yo, just continue doing that, bro. I'm like, yo, like, my promise is. I'm gonna start my own directing thing. And I even have the name. I'm like, I'm gonna start the directing thing. And I'm gonna do that. And when I do do it, eventually I wanna create a scholarship and I wanna pay for your son's school. Mm. That was literally the promise I made to him. It's tough. Bro, I've been doing the directorship for seven years now, bro. It, it just now started picking up yeah, on yeah, the seventh yeah. year. It's a time, Yo, bro. Morgan could tell you the story of the journey, bro. Hell and it's back. Time, yeah, that shit was worse than every street shit I encountered, bro. Hell and back. Because at least the street shit, I knew I would heal. I get stabbed. I get cut up. Yeah. I knew I'm going to heal. But that mental shit, certain people that fuck with you, bro, yeah. you just like, damn, bro. You know, I, and me, I always had a temper. I never... I always like like you get you get with me, I'ma fight you. I couldn't talk. I used to stutter, nigga. I have to deck you, my nigga. You feel me? <laughs> so, I had so a, have a temper, bro. Hence why in the beginning we were talking about we had a lot of yeah, education, bro. bro. Like niggas had to adapt, bro. Niggas had to adapt bad, bro. So like when that shit used to happen, I was like, damn. Bought the camera, got everything done. I'm doing the camera shit. Now look where the camera shit has got us, bro. Look at that. I got right a production now, right? You know I me, mean? it got a it's podcast. Old, it got the underrated crazy. voices. We got voice of the era. We got, got the turns voices. and all. He got everything set up. So that shit crazy, bro. And all that shit stemmed from from Sekou. Yeah. But the person who got the name for it, and I'm gonna say this right now, I don't give a fuck. Oh. My older brother Maury was the one who created the name Day Visuals. I didn't mm. even create it. You know, I so crazy being that we know Maury, bro, and that's really created. like my brother too. Like he won't even care about taking credit for it. Oh bro. yeah, yeah. Maury don't give a fuck about none of that shit. That's but the yo, beautiful nigga he my is. My brother bro. Maury, he was on episode five, I believe, or or episode four. Maury was the one who created Name Day Visuals. I was in U, I was in UB, um, I was in Buff State at BG Crib. I went there for like a homecoming thing or whatever, mm. like a, a celebration shit. I'm there, and I'm trying to figure out a name. I'm asking a BG. BG is like, um, he said a name. I'm like, nah, I'm not feeling that name, bro. So then I texted Maury. Maury was like, Maury sending me like three different names. I'm going to see if I can find my old iPhone to find the text messages. That shit will be lit. Maury hit me up. Maury said, oh, try um Day Visuals. I'm Ooh. like, you know what? That shit sound good. That shit sound I mean, yeah. to me, what it, is, it is what it is yeah, now. Bro. But you know what's so crazy too? Maury helped me out with finding the name for the podcast too. Wow. Voice of the Era. Cause I was like, yo, I'm trying to figure out a name, Maury. Maury like, yeah. We Maury said a, a few names. Then Maury gave me like an idea of a name. It was just in my brain. I just couldn't get it. Then Maury said another name, and that just hit a light bulb in my in, in my head, bro. And I was like, yo, voice of the era. Yeah. He's like, yeah, that's it, bro. 
Shout out to Maury, bro, because I ain't going to lie, all my life, bro, this nigga been putting me on the little things that he don't know that I still use today. Facts. <laughs> nigga, Maury, Maury is a lifesaver. Yo, look, Maury, I'm going to just give you flowers right now, bro. Nice, bro. If I never did ever tell you, bro, you are the best brother a man can ever have, bro. It's Fendi, bro. You the best cousin shit. a nigga can yeah. ever have, Look, bro. it's not the Henny talking. It's me yeah, really it's speaking, really really God. Yo. Matter of fact, let me give you a tea of something that happened one time. So when I was doing a yacht party, right? When I did one of my biggest yacht parties, um, I didn't like the yacht party was, was a success. Mm. The revenue was a loss. People don't know that. The revenue was a loss. And I can admit that. I don't know that. The revenue was a loss, but people didn't know that at all. The party was a success, everything went great, but the revenue was a loss. Now I was gonna do a second party. I did the second party. No, no. I was gonna do a second party. But I didn't know if I was ready to do it yet. Maury was like, nah, do it. But even prior to that, matter of fact, let me get to the real story. I wasn't supposed to do the yacht party. At that time, I had I was I was keeping the clean. I was so bad I couldn't come to that fucking yacht shit. Oh, no, bro. Yo, next year we're gonna do I wanted one. to hit your line and be like, yo, postpone next that shit till I'm home. Next nigga. year we're doing it, bro. Next year we're doing it for sure, bro. I just gotta get a Yo, ready. do it in the summertime, please, bro. In fact, I'm gonna go meet with the yacht owners and then I'm gonna sit with them and then I'm gonna discuss like like what are the plans with do it, it in the summertime, it, please, bro. Yo, that shit I need to be I, there. I was bro. talking to Maury about doing it. And Maury didn't like he didn't really say nothing. He's like, yeah, yeah, cool, cool. I thought he probably wasn't listening. So I'm Man. like, fuck it, man. This nigga don't give a fuck. Yo, one night this nigga Maury come to the crib lit as hell and got our parents' crib drunk as fuck. Nigga, yeah, nigga yeah. Maury was <laughs> Maury's like this over here. What he was the, 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 yo, the Maury come Jack Maury Daniels. said, yo. He said, yo. I believe in you, bro. Mm. I'm like, bro, what the fuck are you talking about? I smell mad freaking Jack Daniels on your breath right now. I love that nigga, bro. You feel me? Maury's like, yo. I love that nigga, bro. Maury's like, yo. Bro. No, yo, I know you don't know it. But I'm telling you, bro. Yo, your mind is very powerful, bro. Mm. What the fuck you talking? What the fuck if you nigga? You feel me, no nigga? Typical hood nigga. What the fuck are you talking about, nigga? He's like, yo, I ain't gonna lie. He's like, yo, when you talking about the yacht thing, I see your whole vision. You could do it. Man. He said, y'all believe in you doing it. He said, yo, listen, I got this amount of bread on me right now. Man. That's what Maury told me. I got Maury was like, I think he was like, he got a couple of bands on. Him. And all that. Now at the same time, he was working for this uh, for, for 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 this um, telecommunication company. So he's like, "Yo, I got this up for you right now. You don't gotta pay shit." Here, I'm like, "Yeah, I hear you." But at the same time, I'm not thinking this nigga. Bro. I'm thinking he just drunk. He don't know what the fuck he's talking about, yeah, bro. Nah. So the next I've been day, with this nigga before drinking, and he's real sane. Yeah, even and it's when like he drink, two, like yo, he's sane. Like, yo, sure. this like at two in the morning, bro. So the next day, bro. This nigga Maury is like, yo. I'm like, yo, what's up? He's like, yo, I'm dead ass. I'm like, what you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Nigga said, yo, you doing a yacht party, bro? I'm like, word? He's like, yeah, nigga. I'm like, yo. I'm like, you serious? He's like, yeah, bro. I'm dead ass, bro. I remember everything I said yesterday, nigga. I'm like, I'm telling you, bro. You could do it. You creative as fuck, bro. It's a lot of shit you could do that you don't know. You could really do it, bro. So Maury put the money up. People don't know. I put, I put. And at that one, I put like 25% of the money. Maury put up like 50% of the money. And then, no, no. Maury put up like uh, the extra 25 and then the other person I collaborated with, uh, that he collaborated with us, it. did he the other 50. It. He feel already me? seen it. And that shit, it went good. Feel me? Although me and the other person, feel me, we ain't got into it a little bit because he tried to do some dumb shit. But it is what it is. That didn't work out. And then the second y'all party, same thing, bro. To the point that because... In certain realms that Maury knew he was good at, Maury knew that I bet when it came to supporting, he could support me in that manner, right? right. So in the beginning too, Maury was supporting, and then after a while, we kind of butted heads when it came to the planning thing, because now he wanted to get involved with the planning more. Yeah, he went and I'm more telling him, I'm like, yo, bro, the way you're trying to do it is not going to work out that way. And that mean, that's when me and him clashed a little bit. He didn't understand it. And then when the party happened, that's when he seen me like, yo, you was right. Mm. Even with the ticket pricing right. for the 2018 ones. He was like, yo, that pricing is not, I don't think that price is good. That's that. Wait, 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 wait. So you saying 2024, it's a, it's lit? 2024, yeah, we getting back at it. Summertime. Bro. 2024, we getting back at it. Yo, 2024, feel me? Lust, Shades of Nude, Yacht Affair is coming back. That's a confirmation. Shades of Nude, yo. Shades of Nude. Everybody, you listen, all the ladies got to wear Shades of Nude. Look, you got a Shade of Nude outfit on nah, right now. Fact. The ladies wearing Shades of Nude 
all kind of sorts of chocolate New looks beautiful in that chocolate on beautiful color. woman we bringing that shit right that back you feel me and yo as a matter of fact in this video we gonna even add the promo video some of the promo videos so people could just see throw that how in there. the thing is Please throw that in there because I was super jealous that I couldn't make yeah. that motherfucker. And he did more than one of them joints. Bro. And look, and no funny shit. Even me and the dude that did the collaboration, we the first people ever in New York City, right? And I'm going to shout his name out, bro, because I still got love for him, although we may not communicate. It's love, bro. Feel me? It's still love. Feel me? His name is Cletus. That's love. Don't make fun of his name because I know it sounds like clitoris. But uh, you ain't even had to say that. No, no, no. <laughs> I fuck with him though. Nah, I fuck with him. Nah, yo, no, nah, real shit though. I'm not gonna lie, bro. I needed him to. I needed him to have the part he did. You get what I'm saying? He did his part. He did everything. Although we might not be good, he did great. He did his part, and he and he produced as much as he could. Feel me? And I, I can't, I can't knock that. We all did what we had to do. Feel me? Now, me and him we was the first people ever, bro, to do a yacht party like that. My first yacht party was in 2017. Yeah, bro, 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 that shit, when I, up until you did that, 2016. you made it into a, like, a... Yo, to this day, I've never seen a yacht party like that, bro. That's what I'm saying. Like, like, you made it into, to like, a, for example, like, your shit was, like, the, like, the Met. You know how when they do the Met shit, mm -hmm. with, like, the celebrities and shit, yeah, and they make a fact. theme? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they throw a like theme the on it? Like, you did that? Yeah, the video of Yacht form. <laughs> You did that yacht form. Yeah. And I never really seen that. Yes, you could go on yachts and it's themes, but the theme really be on some like adult that, theme. That shit was like a prom. And yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like young, for sure. Yo, we was like doing that shit too. That's what I'm saying. You we did this young. Years ago. You know what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say? So when you was doing that shit, I'm looking at this shit like, bro, this is different. But yo, ain't it ironic? Like, like ain't it kind of like funny how like me, a hood ass nigga, right? From the hood, from the Bronx, feel me, a nigga. Bro. Now I ain't gonna lie, you you not a hood ass nigga. Bro. I can't say that. Bro. I can't say that. You feel me? I'm gonna put it this way, right? Cause we I, just live in the hood. Nah, I'm. A, all right, put it this way. I'm gonna put it this way. How my man's will put it. You you like the bougie hood nigga? Yeah, bro. Raised we in can't the hood. Really be hood Raised bro. in the hood, but have a deep aspiration. You feel me? But look at it this way. We from the Bronx, from the ex in the hood. And we throw in an elegant event. An elegant event, bro. Everybody dress up. Nobody coming in jeans and all raggedy shit. Everybody dressing in nude colors, bro. Man, and dresses bro, and suits. It was beautiful, bro. All Watching that. that shit, I was looking at it. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at all the videos and yeah. stories and posts that I'm like, yo. That shit was crazy. Like, yo, why the fuck am I not here, bro? Like, for real. That was something that I wanted to be at. So being the fact that you saying 2024 is lit. 2024, we're bringing it back. 2024, we bringing it back. I don't know if I'm going to wear straight nude. I might just do white. Yeah, you can get away with white. Yeah, hey, I'm fucking he's my black. cousin. He get away with white. <laughs> now I'm a y'all motherfucker. Nah, yeah, you got to let that shit be known now. All bro. right, let me not even I do that. Gonna I can, I can, I can, <laughs> let me just, I'm, I'm going to just do, I, I'll do the nude then. I'll figure it out. Cause they gonna try that shit out too. Oh no, yo, let me wear black, nigga. What? Nigga, nah, no black. I mean, I'm talking about white. Y'all talking yeah, about the total man. opposite. Telling people, black try is that different. Shit. Yo, I had all kind of people. Yo, I had some old white dudes, right? Yo, no offense to white people, I fuck with y'all, but I had some old white dudes. Literally, <laughs> <laughs> not really nigga, shit. Yo, <laughs> I had some old white dudes, yo, and I still got. I probably still got it on Facebook, bro. They hit me up and it was like, yo, oh, I was pissed off. Because, yeah, like they left a review. I was pissed off because I contact and this is, this is like how I'm gonna imitate them talking, bro. These are some old creepy dudes, bro. Nah, you old guy too. I, Just tell I was them I was excited and I thought it was a complete real nude party, but when oh, I contacted I hear him, what they mean yeah, by that? It was like yo, but when okay. I contacted him, he told me that no, it's just nude outfits. He was pissed off, and then another person called me. Yeah, I thought the same too. I'm like nigga, fuck out of here, nigga. I refunded their money back. I'm like yo, no, this is not a nude party. It's a shades of nude attire party. Yeah, yeah. You have attire. to wear nude attire. Not nude, nigga. Come on, I bro. I see why, how they can get misconstrued with how it was thinking that it was a nude party because it's like a nude event. Bro. But, bro, we, I know that shit we was We detailed it to the extreme. Yeah, I'm about to just read the details, bro. You'll be all right. Yo, to the point that every day I was posting, right? Just read the details. The outfits you can wear yeah. every day. I'm about to say, yeah, I remember that. You I remember you was posting like, this is okay, this is good, this is good, this is good. 
Then, yeah, I just missed it, bro. It is what it is. That nigga was going to come to ass naked, though, man. That's, that's some wild shit. He should have came ass naked. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? Yo, that who was the first one? Yo, prior to that, you wasn't hearing about nobody throwing nude parties. Bro, that's what I'm saying. What you're doing is Met Gala. And then, even on a yacht, we the first people, me and Cletus is the first people to ever do that shit on a yacht. That's no one ever did it in New York on a yacht before us. Never. You know what's so funny, too? Somebody went ahead and trademarked the first theme party name that we picked right after that year. The nude stuff? Yes. The Shades of Nude. They went in and freaking did a fucking LLC for that shit. And it's obvious that person must have had to been at the party. have been at the damn yacht party. Yeah. <laughs> had to. <laughs> That's it's obvious. Why, that's Wait, why, do you like the do you like the remember like the, the date, the count, like the date, like how many people were there? That, that's oh, it was like over three hundred people. For a fact, no, no, no. Oh, yeah. Um, I think no, no. It was over four, four, four near five hundred people on a yacht, and bro, a yacht could take seven hundred. New people. York City. Yeah. That's my yeah that yeah that yeah that's one of my that's a great guys. success, bro. I'm not yeah, that, gonna lie. Yeah, that's I was mad guys. tight. I couldn't go to that. Yeah, and then and we got the private room on the top floor that we usually go into and stuff like that. And I'm cool with, like the owners of the yacht company. So and it's crazy because I was the youngest person ever to go to that yacht company and book the boat on my own with nobody nah, telling. Yeah, I my remember own when money. I was watching you do it. Youngest, I'm watching the, the from youngest apart, person bro. I would do that. A lot of stuff that like a lot of stuff that like my friends, family, and stuff do like. I watch them afar. I don't really like hit you up, mm -hmm. but like I know what's happening. I'm hundred percent watching, and that's just really because I'm overseas. Our time frames, our time zones don't really align. Yeah, it's different. You get what I'm trying to say? So when you're up, I'm going through my day already. Like I'm not yeah. up like you up, but I, I'm I'm still paying attention. Like I'm looking. Like I told you, I was watching the videos of your podcast. I'm watching. The, your, your, your new party situation when you had that going all yeah. the videos that you produce and direct I'm watching that shit but I'm not telling you, know, you I'm funny? watching it we never tell the podcast that I even direct it's probably the first time I've been hearing it, a bro. word then nobody know I direct this man is amazing I'm a direct bro. on like the side too I'm literally an artist <laughs> he could do a lot of shit that a lot of people don't believe that he probably could do I am or genius. wouldn't even think that he could do but yeah, when you was doing the directing and stuff with the Africa Afrobeats artists and stuff like yeah. that, I'm like, I'm watching that shit. I don't gotta text you and let yeah, you know. No, I already know. Just now, like if just now, like when we having a, a simple conversation, this is when I let you know. Mm -hmm. Bro, I see you, little bro. Don't think I'm not paying attention. Yeah, I know, I'm watching bro. your interviews. I'm checking in. I'm watching this shit. Just because I don't hit you, don't mean I'm looking. I'm oh, not yeah, looking from afar. Still it's lying. just that being the fact that I'm I'm overseas internationally on a regular basis, on a yearly basis. So I'm on a yearly basis. So I'm like six hours ahead. Yeah. So it's like, bro, like if I hit you in the morning, it's, it's different. Your morning is different from when I'm gonna hit you. Facts. So it's like, all right, I uh, I'd rather see him face to face and tell him. Mm -hmm. So I'll wait till I see you like yesterday. We was together yesterday. Yeah, today. cigar bar, man. Yeah. Yeah, I need to get it to that cigar bar. Cigar yo. bar in the Bronx, yo, we, bro. Yo, we Catch need to fuck around and create our own cigar. I ain't gonna hold you. That'd Catch be a vibe. I'm, need, I'm cool with that. Yo, we need to get our own cigar, bro. Yo, no funny shit. We gotta do like a vlog when we travel somewhere, bro. A day, Especially when we get a the day, Ivory Coast. A day today, Joy. A day today, bro. Yo, I sent the video to Maury with some people, some dudes. They were like tucked up. You know I me, mean? I don't know, yo, I, yo, I don't know if you seen the music video. Oh no, I said the music video. I'm, I'm, I'm I don't, I don't know if you seen the video I directed for Mori. You seen the video I directed for Mori where he had a suit on? No, he had a suit. The on. only thing I just I remember... on some Gotham City shit. No, he had a red suit. The on. only suit that oh red? No, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, that nah, we gonna see that off. Yo, camera. I body that shit. That shit, was, that shit was crazy, bro. That same day, nigga, he he, I had him directing me too, doing a whole shoot for me and all of that shit, bro. That shit went crazy, bro. I have something like that, a theme. Me and Maury yo, this nigga is different, yo. Like him, <laughs> his brother, pretty much all his brothers, different niggas. Like <laughs> different niggas. Like all of them is tapped into different things that are super elite. All of them is life changing shit for real. Like they do a lot yeah. of shit where you won't you like your average nigga don't do. Yeah. Your average nigga don't do the shit that this dude do on the but regular. I ain't gonna hold you though. Yo, everything that we do. I'm not, I I can't list whatever we do, but it's a lot of shit we do. It's so all legal. much. It's, it's all legal, by the way. But anybody, <laughs> any, yo, 
Anybody that's watching this, I kid you not, you can do it. Yo, the directing shit, remember, this wasn't me. God rest, yo, God rest my brother, say cool. Say cool is the one who was doing all of these things. He inspired me to do it. And I didn't go to school for this shit. I went to school for computer science and technology. Feel me? I learned all of this shit from YouTube and actually sitting down for years studying this shit every day, bro. The same time I could have been spending on a block, on a corner, doing dumbass moves, I took that same time, got out of trouble, and read. Feel me? Black people, please read. We all need to read. And then you gotta ask one thing a lot of people don't know, bro. You don't know how much you can benefit from reading. We need to freaking read. And then some. And then some. We need to read. Read the fine print. Read what we don't think we should be reading. Facts. Like, for example, like when you sign up for like a new profile page, like on a gram and shit, and they just say, just check this box. Mm -hmm. Nah. Agreeing to the terms and stuff, you read it. Check the box, agree to the terms, yes. But after you read what you was going on, because they can take your data. They can take all your pictures and use information it. number. They can take all your information and use it to your like uh, your unlikeliness that you don't even know that they're doing, bro. Like these at these data situations is, is adding up. So like that's what they do for real. So read like that's fundamental. Even audio book, motherfucker. Like you know what I mean? I mean that's straight too. Like it's the Yo, same the situation. Best books I ever read, bro. 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene. Mm. And then the 50th Law by Robert Greene and 50 Cent. And then also... I ain't gonna lie, um, I'm big on Rich Dad Poor Dad, bro. I will forever preach that book, bro. I will forever preach that book, bro. Book because it's, it's two different mindsets of getting to the main goal, in my opinion. So, like, it's just... Rich Dad Poor Dad is gonna... Mm -hmm. It's gonna fucking mentor you for, like... Like, I'm... I even I listen I read it all the time. Like I'm I download the audio but just just so I can just read it while I'm just doing dumb stuff like just walking around, working out, or probably just smoking. So, but just that rich dad poor dad is just a huge inspirational book for you because that shit is gonna put you onto real aspirations into different like how you perceive life and money. It's just it go it will it will definitely go hand in hand because when you perceive money a specific way than you perceive life, you're just gonna go at it a different way. So you're yeah. just gonna attack it at a different kind of magnitude. It's just different. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like me, I started reading this book. Um it's called um it's called The Art of War by Shun Tzu. Mm. I mean, they got like stories about historians such as like Genghis Khan. Yeah, after that and all of that stuff. That. So when I read those kind of books, I ain't gonna lie. It kind of showed me how to understand people, even like even with the forty eight laws of, uh, of 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 power wow. by Robert Greene. Right. Like it kind of showed me how to like understand people, and understand like how pe like life is all about. How do I say it? Supply and demand, and it's all about like you give and you get. You get what I'm saying? Everything is a trade. It's Definitely a business. Definitely supply and demand. I mean, no matter what it is, everybody is doing a favor for you to gain something. And even if they're not trying to do to gain something, you have to give them something. So as 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 long as you do that, as, with that trade, everybody's com everybody's comfortable. Nobody feel like they're being owed anything, and that's the beneficial part about it. So I learned about a lot of that, and it's just like in the streets. It's just like how in the hood, certain things don't go the way how you wanted to be planned. Facts. The business field is just like that. A business world is just is no different in the hood. Nah, the yeah. only difference is niggas wearing a white collar or some shit, or you they know, know how to. Bro. You be so yeah. Or they know how to work with contracts. How similar the Very similarities similar. between the, the street aspect of business excuse me street aspect of business compared to like the corporate the office the the fucking suit life is it's it's a lot of similarities that people don't lot. even think about that this it could get to like the connections between the two is just insane bro because it's all networking. Mm -hmm. Networking is like a huge umbrella that people don't realize that is key. Because when you in the streets and you allegedly, if you in the streets and you selling gas and shit, how somebody gonna know your gas is great? Facts. You know what I'm saying? If the next nigga don't put them on. Same with business. If your business, whatever you're doing, for example, this is a podcast. If another podcast not talking about your podcast, 
how niggas gonna know your podcast is really that podcast yeah. for real. This is just a podcast. Unless you get lucky with the algorithm. Exactly. You get around lucky with the algorithm, all right, African niggas, whatever. Smooth. But but for real, for real. Like if you really want to I mean it's it's different. Like I play overseas. I've been in Spain for like a man long. I'm about to go to a different country now other than Spain. And it's I'm excited to just learn a different Different culture. I'm excited to learn a different language. I'm excited to learn different kind of basketball yeah. because I'm like, yo, that's going to, I feel like that's going to make me a better human being. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, I've been in New York for my whole life. Most of the, most, and it's like, more or less, like, it's the beauty. Mm-hmm. Best thing apart about me, really. I'm from, I'm a New York motherfucker. Anywhere I go, New York is, is me. Yeah. Any country I go to, if I say I'm from New York, somebody's going to say, wow. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? So it's That's like the thing, bro. New York is like so it's incredible to me. It, uh, it's incredible to yeah. me, bro. Anywhere I go, I'm gonna be like, yo, I'm from where are you from? I'm from New York. Oh wow, that's incredible. I want to go to New York. <laughs> I can't wait to go to New York. It'd be like that for real. For real. Like I go to sit I, I I have I'm in a conversation situations where people so be like, New York, oh, you're from New that blue pat that blue passport hit different though. That blue passport, look, man. I'm African. We African. But I ain't gonna lie. We was born here, and that blue passport, it's power. I'm gonna say that. I'm, you Like you said, <laughs> you, we African. <laughs> Without a doubt. But being African American? <laughs> different. Different. <laughs> different. <laughs> yo, I ain't gonna lie. I'm, yo, and I'm gonna say this shit right now. A lot of people don't say this Different. Shit. The deadliest threat, I'm gonna tell you right now. And and this is no shade towards anybody else of any culture, any religious background, any anything. But one of the most dangerous things that you can have as a black man is knowing your cultural background mm. and knowing where you come from and at right. the same time be educated. Yes. Right? Please know yourself. Being like being like in an aspect of where you know your history and you know who you are and you know what you are here to do. You know why you are on this planet. You know your purpose. Mm-hmm. As a man, when you know that and you have the cultural backgrounds behind it to, to to continue and teach like newer generations, you will be unstoppable and you will be untouchable. I could sit here right now, not even only sit here. I've been in a situation where I could be outside in a dangerous situation where I know for a fact that nothing is going to happen to me, even if I'm in front of danger, just because I know that y'all ain't my time yet. And his brother's Maury's mentality about thinking that way is really crazy. Yeah, but that's a different kind of conversation. Yeah, people don't be knowing, bro. <laughs> this nigga different. Yo, man, I ain't gonna lie. I've never you, met man. like I'm, I've never met a person like him. I know we spoke about him a lot, but that's just a praise to how amazing this man is. How he probably don't know how much he put into me and he him. A lot of people, man. In others, just us two, just because we here right now. But just nah, I love him for. Yo, I'm gonna say right now, ain't bro, nobody yo, like him ever Maury, in my life. Yo, Maury has done so much for me, and it's it's crazy. I only did one thing really that I can say ever for Maury, mm. right? And it was just random. But to me, I was like, I don't give a fuck, nigga. You're my brother, nigga. Whatever the fuck you need, nigga. When you I'm meet him, him, he's mad different. For me, so that's what it was. For me, it was one situation. I'm, like, I'm not even going to go into detail of the situation. But it was one thing Maury just needed a favor from me to do something. Yeah, and yeah. I did it. Mm. Right? And I even see it as a big deal. I'm like, nigga, what the fuck? I'm your little brother. It don't fucking matter, nigga. We're brothers. I have to do anything that you yeah, ask at I'm, this point. Me and my right? little bro, too, as well. From that one thing, bro, Maury always reminds me, bro, you didn't have to do it. Mm. And you did it. And you didn't even ask the question. You just did it. That matters, though. You know what I'm trying to say? That's he was like, mad. you didn't ask the question. You just did it. And boy, didn't know that at that time, that thing he needed me to do was holding me back from mad other shit. It's okay, bro. bro, bro. You feel me? <laughs> this is also one thing I wanted to say about Maury, bro. God bless my bro. Um, He took me to college, bro. Yeah. He took me to my flight. He drove me my first day to university oh, college. Shit. He took me there. Dark. <laughs> cool, bro. Oh, no, no, we've been talking for. Let me light it. Me we've been talking for a grip. Nigga told me an hour and a half. This is about to be a good story right now.
Uh, yo, bro, Maury took me. Maury took me to my first. Like, he took me to college. It, you know what I'm saying a lot of the a lot of the major stuff that happened to me in my life, Maury or his mom was a part of. Whether his mom went to every single graduation I've had, bro. She went to my college graduation, bro. I think went to my graduation as I I graduated from university. Yeah. I saw her. I couldn't believe that I saw her. I was happy that I saw her. It's like this woman is really like my second mom. His, like Maury's mom is my second mom for sure. I don't know no woman that's ever been around my life like her. Maybe I have, but she's been very influential. Like I've stayed at this woman's house on weekends. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? Like I've 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 been there when when it been I mean the negatives, the positives. They used to get their ass with all the time. You feel me? She used to put me on into real life because she was one she was one of the African mothers or aunts around me that actually knew how to speak to us. Mm-hmm. So used to, she used to put us on to life at an early age. If there were certain things that my mom didn't know how to get through to me. Maury's mom was the one that got it through to me. Whether it was a phone call or whether I stayed at your crib. Yeah. She put me on to a lot of shit that even still today to this life that I kind of take for granted. Like, or like I still use. Because that she's an exceptional woman. Exceptional mother. Yeah, that's real. That's a fact. And she raised an exceptional son. <laughs> Which is a fact, bro. Like this thing of boy been around my life. I mean, I've I've known him all my life, bro. But this is not a time where I I haven't called him and he ain't been there. Yeah. I don't know, not once. And if I could say one, that's I'm capping for real. <laughs> I mean, like I don't know this nigga that he never like he been there for me for real. Type shit. I went to his graduations. Oh, that's cool and all that, but bro, this this shit that I've still used today that this man put into my. Into my life type shit. But yeah, basically, hold on, let me. But basically, talking about Maury's mom, like, and Maury, like, the bro, like, him and his, her and her fucking husband, they raised an exceptional son, bro. He put me on and took care of me in a situation where I didn't think nobody else could. Yeah. And I'm sure he did that to his siblings. I'm sure he did that to his other family members, friends, peers, whatever. Cause isn't I don't really think like I don't I ain't gonna lie throughout my whole life I don't know nobody that really said any negative thing about Maury bro as far as like beef type shit yeah. I got beef with him if they got beef with him they got beef with me bro. but no funny shit you really can't say anything negative about Maury that's what like, I'm saying like no look this thing is really a peaceful will, uh, will literally tell you bro if you really get Maury pissed off. A lot of, now he has his moments where he get an outburst. You feel me? We all get it from bro. Our everybody do. You feel me? We all get it from our father. But yeah. it's like. <laughs> Out of a hundred percent, it's like a one percent chance for you to even get him there. You know what I'm saying? It just probably might have to be if you're having a bad day, a stressful day, he might let me get at you. But he don't at all. So if you was to really get him pissed off, you had to have done something to get him to get to that level. Man. So, I ain't gonna lie, I've never seen him that way. I've known him all my life. Yeah, bro, bro. More, like my mom more knew his mom. Business, bro. More stay out of the he My mom talked way. to his mom every day. Yeah, more stay out of people's business, bro. He just do his own thing. Bro. He at just all at all time, bro. Like that Yo, me and more don't argue at all. The last time we nah, argued probably was like in 2020. I've never argued, with you, bro. <laughs> me and more argued in 20. Yo, me, me and more argued in 2020, and it was for one of the dumbest shit. Prior to that, we didn't argue for 10 years, bro. Probably I never argued, with you, bro. He took me to college. My yeah. first day, he took me. He didn't have to do that. Yeah, he could have told me get on the bus, get on the train, whatever. He didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that. His mom didn't have to show up to my college graduation. When I saw her, I was in. I was like, when I saw this nigga mom at my college graduation, I was just in mad disbelief. I was like, no way, the DMI. <laughs> no way. Because because like college graduation. Because I already when I graduated, I fulfilled my. I fu- I fulfilled my mission. Which was mm-hmm. not to have my mom pay a dollar, a cent, yeah. a penny. She didn't pay no moolah. That's a blessing right there, man. For real. 
When I finished signing my four year college situation, bro, that was a quarter mil that they invested in me. A quarter mil. Who forty five? I read I, I signed all of the paperwork. Every year you gotta sign. Okay. And then you see the money add up, add up, add up. Add up. My mom ain't spent a dollar, yo. She ain't spent a dollar, yo. I'm grateful for that every single day because that depth that I would have put my parents in would have been insane. She couldn't be she couldn't be able to provide for my younger siblings if she had to deal with my debt. That's a blessing right there, bro. You know what I'm trying to say? But when I saw my son moms at my shit, I was like, wow. I was like, wow. She went to every graduation, bro. High school, middle school, she was there. <laughs> she was there, bro. I was just telling my mom the other day, bro, like, I mean, not to be on a little bit track, but like, she really like my second mom for real. Like, <laughs> she been so influential in my life. Niggas don't know because like I said earlier, like if my, there's certain things my mom couldn't get to me, she would speak to Dunting and Sean, she'll get to me. Mm -hmm. Like when she was to have those little talk to us and shit, like we used to be tight that she was talking to us that way. But we, I, I actually took it in a different like I took it differently and I was like, all right, she's talking to me because this this is probably something my mom don't know how to express to me. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Whether we wasn't praying enough. Whether oh, yeah, we man. wasn't yeah, taking yeah, school. Was praying shit whether we man. wasn't taking school serious. I'm talking about back in the week, back in the GIF, long time ago shit. Like, you know what I mean? Different time the ago. Praying shit, D City, D City. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Taking care of the family. Like, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't know how to take care of my family. I wouldn't know how to take care of my moms. I wouldn't know how to take care of my siblings. Because of my mom and my son moms, bro. For real. Like, <laughs> real. Like that, man. There's no, I don't, there's nobody, I, bro. I've never been, like, you know how you be, be in a situation with niggas where, like, for example, like when we started off this whole conversation, you was like, yo, well, we used to try, we used to get into it. Yo, yeah, bro, facts. my fault, bro. <laughs> let me give you five. Let me give you a pound. Yeah, we really right. used to get into it, bro. Like for real, for real. Like this nigga used to hate me. Fight on the top. I used to hate this nigga. Not hate him, but like, I know when I seen him, it was on site type shit. Yo, that ass. <laughs> you know what's crazy too? I'm like, yo, I got to beef with this yo, nigga. Yo, me and BG used to get at it too. Me BG too, BG. BG, BG fucked my back up for life. But Yo. that's a different story. But oh, man. Me, Maury, me, I've me, never I in my it, life with it too. I never in my life got it. Nah, I got Maury with. tight when I was younger one time, bro. Bro, never. Yo, I used one of Maury's like CD cleaners to clean a CD, bro. Nigga, Maury came back from his trip from France, bro. I never that nigga done choked my ass, man. I'm like, damn, nigga. I, I never got one time. I, I used never CD had a cleaner. situation to because Yo, also at the end of the day, Maury funny as hell. was only he's always my big bros too. Yeah, like, even now, Maury if it's a couple months. Himself. Yeah, but I've never met a nigga like this nigga. Still to this day, I've never met a nigga like this nigga, and I've traveled around the Europe and shit like that. Yeah. Like I've never met a nigga like this nigga in Europe. I'm like, bro, like I've. He really a solid nigga, yeah. ten toes down for real. I tell everybody, bro, if you if you have a solid person, I gonna I wish he was here, bro, because yeah. I want to give my son his flowers, yeah, bro. Yeah. Yo, bro, yesterday, <laughs> nigga took me to cigar lounge, bro. I ain't spend a dime. Why this nigga did that? He ain't had to do that. Even the food, the restaurant, nigga. Went he there, ain't had to do nothing. He did fight. yesterday, bro. Hey, listen, man, I yo, it's a blessing being Moore's little brother. Hey, look, and the fact that I'm the middle child, no funny shit. I'm actually the spoiled one. Mm. You feel me? No funny shit. I'm actually act yo, no real shit. Among the siblings though. Uh, because I'm, after yeah, I really, yeah, really I really am the spoiled, like the spoiled one. I get away with anything, bro. I could do anything right now. They gonna still back me. They be like, yo, nah, man, that's our little brother, bro. He feel me. We know him. Yeah, I'm about to say because the niggas know you. Yeah, you feel me? Niggas know you. But bro. yo, I'm telling you, yo, when you have a solid person in your life that it's there for you at all moments through the good through the bad those are people you never cut off and these people don't even have to be blood related for us it just happened to be that yo this is somebody that's very close to us, right so, right for right. me like we blood related for me so I'm it's parents. different now for other people you have somebody like that in life you never burn that bridge it don't matter even if it's your ego you 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 experience some sort of jealousy talk to that person and work it out and fix it out because i'm telling you bro the world is real life gritty and I'm telling you, a person like that, if you lose them, 
you will never be able to find them. Those are people who genuinely care about you. A lot of people just care about you from an opportunist, uh, from an opportunistic like standpoint. Right. What they can get out of you is what they really want. How they can benefit sure. from you. But if you find somebody that really try, like really do things for you and never ask for nothing, yo, my brother Maury has done shit for me, never asked for nothing. Same thing, my older brother Lucky, same thing, done things for me without asking for nothing. My sister, same thing, done, never asked for nothing. And then the good thing about it is, yo, we got the relationship where we give advices to each other. Mm-hmm. I'm the younger brother. Sometimes I'm giving advices to my older brothers and right. sisters. Bro. And in our culture, shit crazy. And our, our culture, that's not really normal. In our culture, that's not even normal. Like in our culture, like the oldest, the most experienced, the most marinated is the nigga that really called the shots. Exactly. Like if the oldest said this, that's what it is. Facts. But to to be to a point where you can listen to your little bro and actually. Compass, like comprehend what the motherfucker trying to say. Bro. Like it takes a lot of maturity, it takes bro. A lot of maturity, and growth. Takes but a basically, lot of maturity. for example, like I'm sure you see it that way. But how I see it, bro, I'm a grown ass man at this point. I'm 30 years old. I'm a grown ass man. I've been through mad shit in my life that I know a lot of niggas ain't been through. Yeah, especially the older niggas I I know. So, bro, what's the difference between me telling you something from somebody else telling you something, bro? Because the way I see it is, what's the difference? Yeah. What's the difference? You know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's like, bro, like, why you don't want to listen? So, because he's a year older than me, you think he's right. Yeah, yeah. But the fact like that me. I've been here longer than this motherfucker, you're not going to listen to me. So, it's like, bro, like, you mean, bro, let's just listen, bro. I mean, I, the age really don't matter up to a certain extent. Mm-hmm. I feel like after 18, it's like, bro, like, we know a lot of niggas that been through real life shit. Yeah. Whether the nigga that been locked up, whether the motherfucker had to do a lot of court cases, where the motherfucker had to... Facts. Had to do mad other dumb shit. Like, or oh, not dumb shit per se, but just this stuff in life where mm-hmm. it's just like growth or else type shit. Like, bro, like, every... Bro, since I've been... I, a, who put baby until now, bro? Everything I've experienced has always made me grow better as a nigga. Like, yeah. as a better motherfucker. Like, just better it's person. supposed to be, bro. A better yeah. Musa, like, for real. And I'm sure that goes to say for you, for Maury, because, bro, like, when I know this, bro, this... If you was doing the same shit from when I known you before, bro, then what the <laughs> fuck is you doing in life? I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? I probably would have been in jail or dead, bro. I ain't gonna hold Likewise. It. I swear to God. It's a Likewise, like, bro. My brothers really did a lot, man. And they might not know how much they did, but just from them, like, literally saying, hey, just sit down and chill, bro. Right. Feel so, I me? Mean, I get it. You feel this way. This is just your emotions. Block your emotions out and understand that we're here for you. We need you here. You right. feel me? Because... When you're doing certain things, you like you're involved in certain lifestyle, you feel like you're untouchable. Or like when you feel like you got disrespected, you feel like, yo, you need to retaliate. You need to show niggas who you are right, just right. in case they forgot. You need to remind niggas what you're capable of doing sometimes. And a lot of people, that'd be their biggest downfall. Like a lot of the times I have to, like my, my brother Maury or Lucky reminds me of that, bro. You're not this young nigga no more where you could just do shit and hothead and get away with it, bro. Thanks. Think about your future. Right. After you do this shit, how you gonna feel when you just locked up? Because you because you just reacted off of somebody running their mouth on you, bro. Right. When you know they older than you, they making themselves look more stupid. As I got older, bro, there's a there's a statement that grows on me more and more, bro. Time and place. Yeah. Time and place. There's a time for me to act ignorant. Hell yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? There's a time for me to not act ignorant. There's a time for me to 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 violate. Mm-hmm. But there's also a time where I, I can't violate right now. You know what I'm trying to say? Like time and place, bro. And that's something that I preach to my siblings. That's something that I preach to my peers, bro. Time and place, whether it's BM drama, whether it's professionalism. You know what I'm trying to whether it's career, likely situations, or just real life, bro. Time and place, bro. You know because is a time and place where you can, you can, you know, what I mean, you can, you can speak up about a specific thing. There's a time and place where you can, you can tell people what 
like what you how you really feel about them mm -hmm. this is a time and place where you can express how you really are as a person mm -hmm. time and place bro and people need to be adamant about that shit because a because don't know, bro. if you people don't know because if you really don't focus on i mean focus on you of course but when you learn when the period of time it is to where you can focus on you to a certain level mm -hmm. that they won't get it like you know what i mean like as far as like when i say focus on you i mean like go get your degree mm -hmm. try to be a better whatever you are whether it's this major or that major whether you go in athletics or not try to be the best person the best version of you as possible because compete with you, yourself. You know what I'm saying? Compete with yourself, bro. Because it's it's a challenge, but it's a beautiful challenge. Fact. Because it's growth at the end of the day, bro. All that shit is growth. If you don't grow, how can you be better? I don't know, bro. As an individual, bro, it's different. So just grow, like use for use the experiences that you've been through. See, even to be like, okay, I can't do that next time. I don't want to do. I don't want to mm -hmm. be in this situation. No, next time. All right, let me do this better. You know what I'm saying? Let me, let me, let me act accordingly in this direction. Different things like that. That's just gonna make you a better. See, make it like even what you said with like with the time and place thing, bro. One thing I learned that really benefited me a lot of the times when it came to me being in the room with people who are highly educated and all of that shit. And I'm like, and me, I'm a college dropout. Mm. You feel me? And I'm in a room with them and I'm and I have more intellect and more intelligence than them sometimes is because I shut the fuck up. I know when I have to shut the fuck up and when I'm supposed to speak. Right. When I go in the room, my first thing I do is shut the fuck up and just listen. The more you shut up, the more you learn about who the fuck is around you. A lot of people don't understand that shit, bro. Some people think sometimes I'm easy being cocky, or some people think that I think I, I don't want to like some people like, damn, this nigga don't want to talk to nobody. No. Yeah. It's not that I don't want to talk to nobody. I am not speaking unless I'm spoken to. Mm -hmm. This is not my environment. I'm not from here. I just need to process the room and read the room as much to my abilities. And then once I'm being spoken to now, then I'll start interacting a little bit. Now, I'm going to I'm gonna go for whatever vibe you give me. Even if you disrespect me, I'm not going to go off and be hostile. Nah, I'm going to be quiet. Because mm -hmm. even if you do that at the same time, just like you learned in The Art of War by Shun Tzu, you... Literally reacting in a calm manner is right. gonna shock people who are disrespecting you. Right. They're like, damn, I just cursing the guy, I just called him an asshole or a bitch. And he ain't even saying the nigga smiling. What the fuck? Isn't it like is this nigga good in the head? Right, right. Why is he smiling? <laughs> I just called you dumb, bro. Why are you smiling? You feel me? So that it gets them paranoid without you having to do nothing, bro. Spiritual warfare. It's just that simple. It's all mental. Feel me? And a lot of people don't know these shits, bro. Yo, you if you sit in a room and let somebody ramble their mouth, they're going to tell on themselves. Literally. That's a fact. They're going to tell on I themselves. Agree. I agree. They're going to brag. I agree. They're going to say a whole I lot agree. of shit. Me, when I get in the room, I shut the fuck up. Anybody who knows me will say that. That's why whenever any new rumor come out about people uh, accusing some bullshit any kind of way, it never was able to uphold because everybody who knew me personally knew my character. I'm glad you said that because they all knew. All my life, bro, I've been a, I've I've been an uh, an observer. Yeah, I like to sit and watch. I like to learn from what I see because now I can prevent it from happening in the yeah. future. You know what I'm trying to say? So when I used to sit there and watch certain things happen, I used to be like, "Why is that? It? Why is that like that? What can I do for it to not be like that?" What can I do for it to be better? So, t to this day, bro, I be sitting, I be observing, like, why is it like that? Like that? Why is it like that? Like, that's just something that just yeah. constantly runs and runs and runs and runs in my head. You know what I'm trying to say? So, I used to try to understand mm -hmm. before I put my two cents into mad shit. Yeah, I had that phase in 2020, bro. You know what I'm talking about? I had that phase. But this was me before. So when I was young, I used to be, why? Like, why is it like that? And why sh is it supposed to be like that? And if any, why can I not change it? Yeah, my shit started in 20, 
20, no, 2018 first is when it started, but I was trying to like stay away from it. Mm. Cause at that time in 2018, we used to go to um, Boogie's crib. My little cousin used to be a um, general. He used Which to be boogie? a rapper, a boogie. Okay. So we used to go to a boogie crib. You know, like, hybrids. Yeah, yeah okay. boogie from hybrids. So we used to go to a boogie crib and shit like that. My little cousin the general. Bugging my brother, right? Mm-hmm. Bu- bubble oh, my you know brother. Bubba too, right? Nah, he yeah. went to FDA. Yeah, my cousin's cousin with Bubba. Nah, Bubba like, like no, I like yo, I like you. You know I like you, bro. Yeah. You know I like you, bro. Bubba really like bomb. Um, Brother, for real. Like, yeah, nah, yeah, I, I know. Them, like, his, I mean, yo, bro, his I, mom be freaking um, um, chefing it up whenever it's eating like, everything. Niggas don't, yo, yeah, you we can know, go yo. crazy yo. about how we, like, oh, nah, all right. I that's, ain't gonna lie, yeah, that's funny, We don't even gotta go to there because that's yo, illegal. His, He's a different kind of tax yo, bracket. It's different. His, it's mom, different. Yo, it's his different. mom be chefing it up, yo. No funny shit, yo. And eat, bro, she be bringing food to the shop, bro. Well, some bubble that's moms make the immaculate sandwiches. She used to pull up. When I was young, she used to pull up with the carts for real, bro. I went to high school with Bubba, bro. Her food be we played on the same man. team for real, but that's just uh, all right, that, that's. I feel like I still said too much. Her food, yeah, her food be hitting different, bro. Different. She can cook. She can cook. So shout like, out damn, to my son. What, I hope what, he Gucci. What's the story bro. again? Or that at again? So basically, all right. So uh, my little cousin, he's related with Bubba. So basically, when we used to go to his crib and shit like that, I ain't gonna lie. Speaking of cousins, saga, Steve. Oh, Steve. Yo, you know, he's supposed to be on a podcast, too. Yo, Steve, Steve, you, um, Steve you a bozo, bro. Chill, chill. Yo, nah, nah, nah. Nah, chill, chill, chill. nah he family, but... <laughs> yo, yo, Steve, Steve, I'm not going to lie, bro. You a bozo, My bro. son, Saga. Nah, he, he was supposed to show up. Or, and then he, he freaking didn't respond. So you I'm know, like, Saga be... He hang on. He hang out with my side of town. I mean, that's... Yeah. My fault. But, <laughs> Steve, bro, I don't know. Steve be on some bougie shit sometimes. Steve, Steve, Steve be acting like an American top model sometimes, bro. Bro, <laughs> Steve. Listen, bro. Yo, stop doing your bullshit, bro. If, you, if we schedule a date... Show up on a damn day, bro. Yo, you Come know it's so crazy name. because I felt like we could have had so many people just around Yo, right now today. Like we so- could, we could have us. Oh, I mean, not saying that the conversation we had today was great, but we could have had a powerful, oh, yeah. a powerful, oh, yeah. powerful conversation today. Oh yeah. Whether it was our brothers, cousins, or great close friends that yeah. really, really know this shit for real. Mm-hmm. Like that shit would have been eating at your hearts for real. Like, we nah, would have been touching this, y'all. I'm gonna say it's Steve's family, so Steve's gonna be here. Not Steve's family. Steve's that's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, like yeah, Steve, yeah, Steve's gonna be I'm here. I'm gonna tell bro. you that for off. It, but we gonna talk shit. Yeah, that's my nigga for real. Steve understand. Nigga. Yeah, we Steve, saga my nigga, bro. Now, after all y'all other motherfuckers that's supposed to show up and y'all flop, I'm sorry, but if you flop, it's a it's a bye bye. Man, you feel me? Like listen, like it's all it's all about respect and being professional. If you scheduled to come up, you come up. Feel me? Yo, bro, I wasn't scheduled to come what up. I just, I saw him yesterday and said, he we said out tomorrow. We're doing that shit tomorrow, bro. He scheduled that shit without, he scheduled that shit without even us. Nah, word. <laughs> I should say, yo, tomorrow is lit. I don't give a fuck. Yo, that's how it's supposed to be. And then look, tomorrow he about to, about to fly out, man. Man, he I'm out of here tomorrow. I just wanted to yeah. come out here and just have a chance with a little bro, bro. Like, because. Yeah. Bro, we went through so much. Facts. But we've been through so much because we've been on a mission since day one for real. Mm-hmm. So we didn't we don't really get a chance to sit back and reflect on what we really been through to get here. The hard work, bro, the sweat and the tears, the crying, the pain, all that. We don't really look at that. We just be like, all right, we here because we just did it type shit. Like we don't really, really focus on the before, for for before you know for saying? real. We wasn't taught to look at. Like we, we weren't taught to make excuses. Yeah, I'm trying to say that for sure because I we didn't see our parents make any yeah, of that. Never. So it was really like full throttle push through yeah. until like yeah. we like we could sit back and be like, yo, we really. That's just Larry Fifty Cent's quote. We really did some shit. Like get rich or die trying. For real. Oh, get for rich or die trying. Like, and we still dying trying. Like, yeah. don't get that shit twisted, fam. Either it's gonna happen or it's gonna happen. And it's gonna happen. Yeah, it's that that. <laughs> it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Like, it's yeah. gonna happen now and later. Five years from now, bro. inshallah. You got what I'm trying to say? Now, inshallah. Five years from now, we all gonna have our mansion. 
Look, and I'm saying this shit right now, yo. Yeah, I know I love preaching shit. But the crazy thing is, we got our mansions in Africa, bro. Oh, yeah, like, I don't get it. that shit Africa twisted. Set up. We mean over here. We set up in Africa free. great. You know like, mean? if we wanted to yo, go out there, we good. Fact. But here is what we trying to set up. Here's what we trying to set it up. Because as first generation African Americans, yo, like no off rip, we need to establish that here too. Facts. Africa is gonna be a bit easier because we understand everything from there. Yeah, like, but that's that's in, us. It's like, been ingrained in us. Right. But here, mark my words, give us five years, probably even sooner than that, man. Man, I want to say less than three. We're going to own more land here, more property here, and more things and more opportunities. We have the underrated voices going on, and we have Voice of the Arab podcast. Not only that, we have the visuals production that's going on that's going to be given opportunities. I'm telling you, one thing I know for sure, for certain... If this podcast shit don't work, they visuals for sure. <laughs> they the visuals for sure is elite, bro. Because it's the same shit that you're gonna see on the Vivo. Yeah. The same shit you're gonna see on the BTs, MTVs. This is the same shit, bro. Same quality, all that. Facts. Same quality, all that. Yeah. Great artists, everything. It's the same shit. It's just, it's just him. That's all it is. It's just him. Bro, it's not. Even, <laughs> it's, yo, him. it's not even me, bro. Like. It's everybody. It's right, yeah, everybody. I mean, essentially. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yo, I kid you not, yo. It's everybody. Which is like, all. Even, yo, of... everybody's success that I've seen, bro, within the family, bro, I swear to God, that shit fuel me, bro. Which is not like all people, a Some people thing, see certain bro. things and they hate. Yeah. Me, when I see progress and I see somebody succeeding, bro, I swear to God. It's like, yo, that shit's like a dopamine to my fucking brain, bro. Yeah. Shit like I get high drug. off of that it's a shit. Drug, bro. I'm like, yo, this nigga made it. It's right, lit. Right. We all gonna make it. That's why I told you yesterday. About it, bro. Excuse me. That's why I told you yesterday. Yo, tomorrow we lit. Because mm-hmm. I didn't really care. I'm. I mean, I don't gotta come here to impress anybody. I'm coming here to talk to little bro for real. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying like, and these are real conversations that a lot of people don't probably understand. But coming from me and coming from him, they'll get it better. Yeah. Because I mean, I'm a I, I went to a scholarship school. I'm good. Like I can talk about what it takes to get there. I can talk about what they look for. I can talk about. You know I'm saying I can talk about how to act accordingly and shit mm-hmm. in that dynamic. Whereas he can do everything visually. Whereas it's talking about. I mean, editing all his work. I'm saying producing it, directing it, whatever. They don't know about it. They don't know you about the it. Tea just I'm <laughs> spilling tea. I'm spilling my fault. I drank, bro. We just finished the whole bottle. <laughs> In fact, we just finished the Henny. Anything Yo. goes. Nah, for real. He is hot, bro. Me. I see the cap, man. But no cap. I'm saying that just to say, like, bro, like, yeah. tap in because we trying to be tapped in and we trying to tap you into being tapped in. Facts. <laughs> That's the simplest way I can put it. Like, I'm gonna say one thing right now. As he said when you see they visuals, a lot of things go behind the scenes. He said, All right, right. I know I know, yeah, I know Musa giving my flaws right now, but I'm gonna take this time. I know everybody's gonna usually tell me, nah, you never take the credit for mm. shit. I don't give a fuck. It's not about me. But the one person I say everybody need to give credit to, and I really appreciate it if everybody could do this. And this is something I never ask from people. I don't ask shit from nobody. But if you can do something for me, I say the best thing you can do for me is pray for my boy Sekou. His mm. first name is Sekou, last name is Toure. Sekou Toure is the one that influenced me to do everything that I'm doing. Every every Shout mission, out every, to every everything that I've really been pursuing, Sekou has literally helped me out with basically changing my life around. Stop being in the street doing dumb shit. Stop getting involved in dumb shit. Sekou has done that. And it's sad that we had to lose his life in order for like us to like change ways and learn from our mistakes and stuff like that. But everything that I'm doing right now, I kid you not, Sekou has had a bigger impact on all of that thing. Good word. Shout anything, out to Sekou. Like, feel me? And if and if y'all could pray for him at least, you feel me? He he's no longer here with us and he's watching us from above, you feel me? But as long as y'all can pray for him and pray for his family and pray for his son, that's what that matters with me, bro. Word. Offer it. Word. That's what that love. matters with me. Love. That would make me happy. You, you keeping that shit going, bro, and then yeah. I mean you keeping that shit going and then some, bro. It's like you doing mad shit on top of that. <laughs> Whether it's the yacht, for promoting. That shit's a headache, bro. I know it's a headache. Yo, my brain being a million places at once, bro. It That's gotta, why I need to it, meditate. I mean, it gotta be a fucking headache, bro. Because, bro, like, 
But when oh, have man. you known your parents to not have a headache? Yo, that's what I'm saying, bro. After seeing Pop running three businesses at once by himself. When bro, have you not shit. seen your parents not having a headache? You know that shit I'm normal. Saying? So they may having a headache normal for hey, niggas. That shit normal. That shit insane. Good or bad, bro. I don't Yo. give a fuck. That headache is going to prepare you for life. You know it's crazy, right? When, like, you talking to your friends about certain things. Like, some people are not visionary people. They right. don't see the future. They just see the now. Right. Right. For me, I envision the future. Mm -hmm. What's next? I want to know what my purpose is. Why am I on this earth? What is the universal law of me even being alive? Mm. Why am I alive for? While I'm alive, what am I doing wrong? What, right. what should I be doing? You get what I'm saying? Feel me? So it's like I had to take that step back and be like, all right, cool. I'm not gangbanging no more. I'm tired of that shit. Mm -hmm. I'm out of that shit. Then I'm like, I bet. I'm not. I'm going to just back away from the streets. I'm not doing that shit no more. What's next? And when I did that, I lost a lot of friends. I lost a lot of friends. No, I mean, that's going to happen, bro. You're going to lose a lot of people. It's sad. I lost some of them to the system. I lost some of them to, like, they six feet under. And at the same time, I lost certain people that were fake. Tragic. And when I literally lost those people, I started regaining everything back. Your first steps, like, your first six months is going to be a lonely route. It's going to sure. be a lonely route. It's going to be hard as fuck. For sure, for sure. But once you get past that and you realize, yo, listen, you don't really need anybody but yourself to really make shit happen. That's all you need. For me, like a lot, like a lot of people tell me, nigga, I'm a one man army. I am a one man army. A one man army. What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to Voice of the Era podcast. Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and hit that notification button for more content on the platform. And make sure to also follow us on rumble.com at Voice of the Era for more exclusive content and full episodes of unreleased scenes and unreleased episodes that we'll be having there that will be uncensored. Feel me? So thank you very much for tuning in and continue to watch the new episodes. Peace.